Good evening and welcome, everyone. This is the North American Halo League. My name is Mr. Snow. I am joined here by Heavy Rainfall in the booth and the man behind the scenes and the screens. You guys all know him, none other than Biggie B. We will be your eyes and ears for this evening's broadcast of the Season 1 playoffs. Yeah, we're, we're here in the playoffs. It started today uh, at, at noon. We've gone through a whole lot of um, uh, brackets and rounds so far, and we're about ready to get started with the semifinals. It has been about, a long day of Halo, man. <laughs> yeah, it has been a very long day. We're getting it, and it's been a long season too, right? We had we had eight weeks uh, of regular season play. Eight teams were drafted with about 12 people on each team. They split them up into a couple divisions. Um, and then, you know, we now we put all those divisions into one league. A lot of them weren't able to show up today, unfortunately, but we got through it. We've got through to some of our finals here. And uh, yeah, I mean, I only recently joined the uh, North American uh, Halo League here um, recently, like week seven and eight, but like they were some awesome games. I mean, we got to see Hang 'em High finish really strong when their first two games of the season. They're not fortunately not in the playoffs now, but it was great to see them uh, win some cool games and the Banished, right? The team and one of my favorites here with Yu-Gi-Oh Tools and his buddies from the SVP program, uh, they had a great finish to their season two, like taking a really strong 3-0 victory um, against both the Flood and then, uh, yeah, and, and then a uh, winning a forfeit for their last one but they really you know tend to turn on the gas late in the game and just with their knowledge of the game is you know very very uh, convincing really so uh yeah it's it's been a great season and and now so far in the playoffs you know part of the bracket's been really interesting to watch develop as some of these guys have been playing the other ones not so much um you know in amber clatt shout outs to them they beat the maw the team that three owed them in week seven and then they go went to send foe hammer the number one seed in our bracket to the losers bracket um and the banished of course no surprise there they're not lose a single map so far and they're going to be our first game to watch versus in amber clad in these semifinals. what do you think about that oh dude i'm excited to watch it man love me some halo uh yeah. getting a little bit of time with the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh tools uh checking out what they've been playing and i'm excited to see them uh Kicking, kicking it up in this match. Yeah, agreed. He was just in here with us chatting a little bit and obviously watching some of the other uh, guys compete and just his knowledge. I mean, everybody, you guys know him. He's a big part of this community. He's a good caster guy um, and, uh, you know, involved a lot of production. And his knowledge of the game is is pretty uh, intense. Like, he, he just can see the game, even just from somebody else's point of view. He's pointing out, like, where people are on the map, like, who's dead, who's alive. You know, just his awareness and the speed in which he's been, uh, you know, addressing or like recognizing all these situations. Just, it's nice. You know, as myself as a new caster, he's, is, he's it's got really what I would cool. Call to that see. washing brain. You know what I mean? Yep. 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 Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So we're working on getting players in here. You actually got to send me and uh, the staff an invite, I believe. What? Really? Interesting. It wouldn't be Halo without some technical difficulties. But um, yeah, our winner semifinals, we're going to start off with a, a capture the flag on Fathom. That's one of my favorites to watch. Although I'd be curious, I don't know if I've actually seen the NAHL play Fathom CTF. I've seen some other leagues play it. And the way that tends to work out in those ones, right, is you really want to control that top mid position. Um, and it's just sort of, you know, four spawns into either the, the engine or the uh, vat or like the far corner. And so I feel like in this one, there's going to be uh, the potential for, you know, some some really quick flag caps too, because that distance from flag to flag is so, so short. So that could honestly be a really quick game if it, if it, if it works out in favor of, of one team sort of snowballing, getting the right slays at the right times. I'm just kind of curious to see what they're gonna their path to uh, moving the flag along is gonna be like. You see a lot of teams take it down the, uh, I forgot what it's called, a little little pool, uh, but it might not be the smartest play with uh, these high level players that we have on the field today. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think that's through through pit you're talking about. Basically, you leave more or less right out the front door and and going right to the left there. That's sort of like the most easy way to go, but it's it's so open. And so I wonder, yeah, I mean, it'll be curious to see if they're, you know, make some some variety of plays there in that one, whether or not you want to like 
try and push it bottom mid, although that's a nade trap down there, or be a little bit sneakier and kind of try and run the long route, depending on where your team is positioned. Should be should be some uh, interesting match though. I'm I'm excited, man. I love me some Halo. Yeah, I always do. Anytime I get a chance to watch it, uh, I always love it. Going to be the banished uh, versus who is it in amber clad. So I know yep. for the banished, it's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh Tools, Jolly Joss, Strally, and Brooks. I feel like we're just watching some of their games uh, previously versus the Fallis Cowboys. Um, or I forget actually who it exactly was worth, but they uh, I saw Strally really go off, like huge, huge kills. So excited to see them, uh, him be looking out for that. And then uh, and then in Amber Clad, I know they've been playing really well. Like Ribsets is a solid player, so is uh, Financial. And I'm really curious to see what they'll bring, especially because today they've been so hot and they've done so, so well, taking out, like I said, the first uh, seed full hammer. So, yeah, this hopefully should be a good one. We're just about getting all these players in here to get this game started as soon as possible. Thank you guys all for tuning in and checking this out. I know it's am been a long I, am I looking Halo. at this right? Did, did full hammer lose in the uh, loser side too? Are they out? Let's pull that up real quick. There's my bracket here. You're correct. Full hammer D1 went down to the flawless Cowboys. And that was Hard. with uh, Fireboy and his squad there. Fireboy, Simply Fear Me, Nightmare, and Glitchy. I believe are the ones playing in that one today. And yeah, they've. I've been watching. I'm sure most of you've been watching uh, Fireboy's point of view today as they've been playing through that. And uh, yeah, they really took it to full hammer in that one. That's wild to see. Uh, Usually, we, like, we would have expected Seed 1 to come all the way, but short run, man. That was always next season, though, guys. You know, a little bit of upsets here and there are always nice. I mean, that's something that, that again, as I say, I recently joined the NAHL. Like, all these teams and players are here to play. Like, they're all pretty solid and good, and everyone's improving uh, a lot as they go around, just as, you know, we all should be. So, really, any team can, can take it, you know? Like, that's... Uh, that's something that's nice to see. You know, you don't necessarily just see, oh yeah, okay, the 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 teams, the one and two seeds are just winning, automatically going to make it. Yep. The nice part too is that this shows that the most of the other teams have actually really improved over the season too. Uh, not just getting better, but they're actually showing the progression since they're beating seed one. Uh, it's going to be wild to think about what will happen with season two with some of these teams uh, after being dis or being beaten. And this bracket, they're going to come back hungry next year. Yeah. Or next year. Yeah, season. most definitely. Most definitely. And yeah, we appreciate everybody, uh, you know, being patient with us and um, being patient with each other. It's our first time kind of taking a stab at the, doing this kind of thing, you know, end of season tournament here. So we're really working on uh, just trying to make sure that, especially for now, to sort of get these through, make sure it's as fair as possible for everybody. Uh, and then certainly making changes and, and working with everybody more to, uh, make everything more equitable and better for for com competing and, and playing in general in the future yeah it seems like for nahl it seems uh competitive integrity is valued incredibly high and that's something you don't see a lot in a lot of these like pick them up tournaments or weekend tournaments yeah yeah i i would agree i mean i think that too especially halo 5 just being such a, an old game at this point you know i hate to say it because it's it's always you know holds a special place in my heart and i i still play it and i still love it even though it's five plus years old and you know <laughs> now of course with infinite you know kind of it used to be right on the horizon and, and it's it was almost a little bit of a letdown for many of us saying like oh we were we were all gearing up and get ready for infinite and now there's sort of this this extended period of time but I, I think that's, you know, on a development side, from from my point of view, I think that's that's going to be good, right? Like, if the game's not ready to come out, you know, we can't have another MCC, uh, d you know, debacle, right? That that released yep. with the with the Xbox. But it's going to be challenging, I think, for just sort of the community. I hope that everyone sticks together a bit more uh, and continues to grind out and get better at this game. You know, network more with each other uh, and really grow and improve so that. So that, it, you know, going into Infinite, we have a really robust pool of players sort of at this level, ready to be ready to be pretty competitive moving forward. And even to double into that with that new game, we'll have some new new fresh faces. Uh, some of those, like even if they're not ready for Infinite, this Halo 5 is a good way to start. Whether that's straight with an AHL or just, you know, pick them up in matchmaking, these are things you should be considering now. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, 
as we all know, like... Oh, I need to reset. Excuse me, everybody. I need apparently hard reset. Issues with my internet. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, like, especially because we know, like, that when Infinite comes out, the influx of people who maybe shied away from it or started playing other competitive games are certainly going to give it a try. And if it proves Absolutely. to be a lot better for, for many reasons, like, that should wholly hopefully like hold its weight and really you know build these communities all these small ones they got a chance to grow it forms new ones everybody's able to you know make new connections and obviously with a new game you know the game's going to be slightly different so it you know hopefully enables an even more competitive strategic you know um, adjustments and you know maps and game types and all that cool fun stuff so i mean new game types would actually be pretty pretty impressive I, I didn't think about that on the competitive level i'm just so used to god ball capture the flag and ball you know you never know like yeah i mean it's just sort of we were talking earlier today especially like battle royales big right you never know if that's going to be in the in, in the new one or uh you know i don't know sort of sky's the limit right it's certainly there's a lot of even, people to double up on that statement i would even say like maybe are they going to consider bringing breakout back I know it's not everybody's favorite and it's got a bit of a niche community, but that that it wasn't a failed project. That's something they could probably improve on if that is something they're you're thinking about. But I mean options are optional. Yeah, exactly. Uh I think if you just shoot me an invite, Rain, I should be able to get back in here. Apologize again for the delay. It says I'm not back in the game, huh? I just think I'm you I just me and bring you back. Again. Wouldn't be a tournament without some technical difficulties. Yeah, you know, a lot of people playing Halo today. My internet should be okay. It's funny, I've only ever really had serious issues with the NHL, but sometimes it's just sort of luck of the draw. Do I need to invite you, or...? Yeah, if you can Somebody just, needs to invite, invite me. me. It'd be nice to, to watch the game. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> gotta get it anyway. <laughs> Here we go. About to get this one started up for everybody in just a moment. Fathom CTF going to be our first one in this best of five. This is the semifinals versus the Banished and in Amorclad, two teams that have come a long way so far today. Jolly Josh, Brooks, Strally. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools versus Bastion, Costa Clan, Flurry, and Ripsets. And you know, I'm I'm really, you know, excited to about learning more of these players more often. I'm a big stats guy. I do, you know, I, I'm I'm developing some friends and working with some people who want more stats done for their leagues and their teams. We've got to do some Apex stuff. I do some other Halo stuff and um, you know, working with working with the Halo D bot people soon hopefully should be really really fun see what they can do just to give just this community just more fodder to play with and especially for those who don't necessarily play at this level right these guys are all really really good um, but you think about you know why we love watching football or or soccer or baseball basketball hockey all those like sometimes pouring over those stats is really really fun you know making a fantasy league whatever have you so it should be pretty pretty cool i think is you just need the, to enable observers here ETF that i'm picking Just so making sure there's two. I'm getting a little confused on it. And then map. I've actually never hosted. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Thanks, man, for hosting and doing this. It uh, yeah, no takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it soon. I'm not seeing the Fathom one. Uh, I had a bookmark. I'll have to search for it, probably. I'll get it, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> Give us a second, guys. But yeah, <laughs> another brief uh, shout out here to the Spartan 5 program. Uh, I was just checking out their website earlier today. Seems like a good group of people. Um, some nice leadership there. Certainly their website looks awesome. Um, so if you're ever, you know, looking to play uh, with more people, you know,
myself who's been playing since Halo 1. Um, you know, it's just it's such a great game for many, many reasons. But now, diving into this first one, said it once, we got a, I'll say it again, CTF. We got a couple of big battle. fans out in the chat of the Spartan program, apparently. Shout out to you guys. Yeah, Taze and Crewman, very good. <laughs> All right, starting this one off, we got Invis top mid. We're going to start the board off with rip sets. He's going to go make a challenge for this top mid play. Looks like you go tools. Gary is going to try and make that jump. He does so. A couple members go down for his team, though, and they're already starting off to a really quick pull here. Strali top mid is going to get reversed by rip sets, and they're going to start this flag run. Yeah, it looks like Dave's running up straight to the middle. This is what I was talking about earlier, where we weren't sure which, which ways they would take it. You can't tell what's safe and what's dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And you can see that there was a counter on the other side. And that, that bottom mid place, it is really dangerous, but it looks like they're like they were almost both teams were in a good position, but they, they really did a nice job of, of stopping them both there. And the back smack from Strali gonna now rock this railgun. He's moving into the base, gonna get a good kill on Bastion. Man, these guys just don't miss their shots. He's gonna now start a flag run. I think this could be a really scrappy game here, Rain. That could be a good start though. Like they get the flag pretty far. Oh, but they're gonna get it returned. Yeah, it looks like red team just is spawning uh, over on the red uh, treehouse side. Now on board with Flurry, who's holding this railgun. One power up, really, on the map. That end is going to be popping up in probably about a minute or so. So we saw it was burned earlier. He split the map here, sort of the long way, sort of the short way. Flurry just trying to stay alive as best he can. And, He's doing uh, a good job of it. He's taking yeah. two grenades and a couple shots while still being no shield. He is. A couple members down for both teams. I'd like to see him take a high ground position, but it looks like he's now in a good spot for his team to grab that flag, and they're going to try and get this one in. Misses the railgun shot on Brooks. That could be huge. Brooks gets a play, but they do end up getting that cap exactly. For those who are not familiar, the... Uh, we just run some different rules, obviously, here, where we've got the uh, extended mag. So, you know, I'm sure all of us have experienced, you know, you run out of ammo, you can't finish those kills. The extended mag just enables for a lot faster play here, which, which I particularly like. I think that, you know, there's a there's an avenue, Gary was talking about it earlier in chat, saying, eh, not sure exactly how competitive it is, but I disagree. I think it's very competitive. I think it, it adds a whole new level of speed. I personally think it works better than the attack mag for, for it. For the most part, like with that attack bag and the, the the OG pistol, a lot of times it just transferred into one and a half kills. And in a 4v4 game, you've got to get more than that. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Three members down here at four blue team. Now Brooks is going to start the run. He's going to go, exactly said, this time over to blue Vat. He's going to get taken out from the spawning team. There are blue team, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, of course, with this invis. Not quite yeah, finishing off the kill there. That way last time. Is that the way they, that is the way they ran it before, huh? Yeah, they ran it through the red side though, uh, which probably would have been a smarter decision this time, just to try to get the spawns, but they were, it didn't work in their favor. Yeah, exactly. Rip sets now just hanging out with the flag there, trying to get out of the base, but yeah, as you said, sort of that's the long way around. So he's gonna get taken out instantly. Feels like they just gotta get a little, couple more slaves before they can actually pull that flag to get it out there. But red is taking over blue base. They're gonna get it pretty far. Yeah, and they did a good job forcing all those spawns over by blue base. That was exactly what they wanted to do. And look at this, they're now about to put this first flag cap in. Costa being attacking a top mid position. They're gonna tie this one right up one to one. As we really reach the about midpoint part of this game, you know, uh, we do have some listening set up here for these teams. So I'm thinking maybe we oh, go really? into a listening for Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools and his squad. I'm looking at Silo. There's two spawners. They're going our tree. Yeah, they spawned. 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 They Side. Yo, okay. Coast is on me. Coast is on me. Yeah, they're tree, they're tree, they're tree. Okay, I'm working on top of the tree. Ally, bro. Ally. 
Two in, two in, Jen. Two in, 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 Alright, they're pulling. Who shot me? Gary, watch out. Oh my god, they're pulling. 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 Oh my god, this entire team pinned down in their base. Of course, they just get that flag as they were chasing that one down, and blue goes up two to one. This is that lead they needed, and so that, that lead they wanted. I don't know if you guys get a chance to see the, the assassination on the top near the camo. It's actually pretty impressive. A small little ninja popping. Yeah, I I did catch that one briefly, and that was uh, who who was that by? Yeah, that was that was by red team. Yeah, it was, uh, I want to say it wrong, I'm assuming Strally. Okay. It was Strally over Fury. Definitely would not want to be on that end of it. No, not at all. And, you know, the assassination being on, just being a, you know, I don't know, it's probably not meant to be disrespectful at all, but it's, it's actually, it can be quite cumbersome, right, if you're not, uh, you know, you, you you're not good at just hitting that back smack, because it can waste a lot of time. Yep. This camo is about up. It looks like Brooks is able to sneak away from that as Costa's trying to get it. Now he goes in for the back smack. This could be the momentum they need. Just a couple kills down. He's going to hold down this bottom mid position. The team is over there in the uh, blue treehouse. This is two down. Well, three down. This would be the opportunity. Brooks is the only yeah. one alive with the camo. He's got to play fence a little bit. Yeah, he's taking the top mid position. Misses that headshot there. That's a good job of that other player staying alive. Now he's going on, he's trying to be aggressive with this, but yeah, with his team dying like that, he's trying to just get behind them as best he can. Support his team through there, one dead for each team. About five minutes left in the game. Up two to one is in Amber Clad. And man, Brooks is just using this invis. I think he's got three or four kills with it so far. Now over here in Blue Yard with the railgun. Of course, his invis has run out, but he's putting in a good job by Flurry, missing that railgun shot on him. He needs some help over here. I'm a little surprised he missed that shot with Bastion. It looked like it went into him. They have our flag. Yeah, it was I'll a little the... on the close side there. It's not a bad trade though when you lose your camo and you can get the power weapon. It's still worth the value. Oh, for sure. I mean, he was just it was just running out. Uh, so it's a great time to just pick it up here though. It looks like there will be the third cap in four in amber clad. 3 to 1 victory on that one. Tough game, tough game. Take a look at the stats real quick and see what happened there. Some good fights there. Yeah, taking a quick look at the the stat sheet here. Solid damage out of both teams is what I'm noticing. A lot of assists though from the an Amber Glass. That's uh, that shows the teamwork is really rewarding. It's not just them talking to each other; it's them actually listening to each other. Yeah, exactly. Just getting that team shot in there. And, you know, struggling, though, from Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, Gary, they're doing a lot of damage. Um, or, excuse me, not doing as much damage as I would expect. 3 and 16, he really struggled on that map, Adam. So I wonder, you know, if he's going to need to be able to pick up his performance if they're going to be able to take uh, future games. Because having a weak link on your team when you're playing against these guys is, is not very, very good at all. Our next one... This is the same team that beat seed, seed one. Like, you can't sleep on them, guys. You got to wake up for it. <laughs> exactly. And the next one going to go into a Team Slayer match on Regret. That'll be the next one we're going into. And, and this will be a, a different game, right? I love that we go from the objective-based play down to the Team Slayer because it kind of, like, resets. In my mind, you know, the objective game types, they're much more they're much more difficult. You got to not only focus on slays, but you also have to focus on the objective. Team Slayer, you get to dictate your own pace. You get to really understand where the spawns are, um, much easier, I think, and you know, rotating with your team. You're only playing your life here, so 
I'll be curious, really curious. Uh, I, I imagine this is going to go a lot closer of a game. I mean, obviously we saw Bastion 18 and 13 uh, really going off a little bit there, but but nothing other super, super crazy. So I think these teams are pretty well matched. So it could be a really close on this next one. Hey, Snow, can you do me a favor and tell me what was the map again? Regret. Regret okay. All right, we ready to go? We are all set. So I think we should, if we could, we should jump on Yu-Gi-Oh at first. Because I feel like a match like that, his first one being, if I'm being honest, as bad as it was, he's probably going to want the redemption story. So he's probably going to want to kick it in overdrive really quick. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think he's probably a little bit frustrated at the, that one. So, um, yeah, we'll see. But also, you know, regret you're going to be fighting for that bottom mid. That bottom mid fight in the beginning for that overshield. Um, it's just so quick. It's so quick. And so it's it's a question of, you know, are you going to dance around with the other team? Or are you going to you going to just fly for it right off the bat? We are going to start off here with Gary. And he's electing to just fly, but he's going to get a mouthful of grenades. As that is the in overshield is still up. Brooks grabs this rocket launcher, or excuse me, this grenade launcher. And who did the overshield go in the pans of? It looks like it was burned. Oh, excuse me. Flurry has this overshield. He's not taking a top mid position. Their team up 3-0. He's just hunting for players now. His team is a little bit separated, but of course it looks like Red is on the back foot as they go up 4-0. The team and the callouts are just on point there. Him and Costa Clan pinching that other player. They but will they really rook Rocky spawn with that after uh, the whole team wipe. Two of the red team players spawn on the uh, top anchor and the one spawn bottom bottom of red base. Mm, that split spawn, forcing that split spawn is exactly what you want to do uh, as an amber thigh to split up the force you know your opponent from having even less options in terms of teamwork you can't count them out though because i mean we started with zero three here we are ten five they're definitely beating beating some fight or winning some fight finally this is what we wanted to see yeah and we certainly know that this uh this banished group is is one to turn it up in the middle of the game right like that there's we've seen before that they just like fire on that gas they're able to come back and win games that they're they're really down at now 12 date this would cut that lead a little bit Hugo tools going over to top car he's now rotating back they're getting a little bit of that splits on he's going to push this player a little bit recognizing though of course he's not pushing in the direction he wants him to but holding down like kim and jolly josh gonna pinch that player not taking a different spot. I really like the positioning of their team now, just like honing in on these guys. Of course, now he's going to get turned around and caught out of position by Flurry. As we go on with him, he's taking the spot up at Red Rampart, now nading over at the top P. It seems like they're just not getting the pushes they want. That's twice that Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools has been pushing towards the top uh, trees, but getting caught with uh, his teammates being pushed back or being killed while trying to split push with them for that. To try to get that pinch yeah agreed and you know you can see now they're three they're three down rip sets of course grabbing the camo now they go up six kills now contesting for where the plasma pistol is going to be rip sets a little bit farther from his team so therefore red is going to actually recognize that rotate away from him because he has that power up and now he's Playing a little slow here, but still getting off good shots, and his team is able to collapse in on these guys. 24 to 14, they bring their lead to 10. They are really showing that teamwork makes the dream work in this game. It feels like uh, Red is just not 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 mentally in the game yet. They're sleeping on this. I think they forgot these guys. Beat up, these are the ones that beat seed one. You can't just let them have their way. You got to take control of the map. Yeah, I mean, I wonder, you know, sometimes a little bit of the, the waiting game kind of hurts, but, you know, they're playing this this whole new squad, and I, it's, it's one of those things, too, where, you know, some teams just sort of have your numbers, and people can just play against you really, really well, and they clearly, they did that last game with their 3-1 victory CTF, now they're clearly doing it here. Flurry just taking a top mid position, Strali's going to take him out. So now he's fighting for this top mid and I love this map because it really does like it's very aggressive and there are a lot of like corners and things to hide behind but if you start to have control as you can see now red team really has this mid control they want to push this Strali moving through the red rampart into the base he's gonna get in behind these players this is the opportunity I think they need to really make a difference here and cut this cut this lead I mean 31 to 23 they really gotta start to turn the gas right now 
Yeah, I think it looks like they're still sleeping though. They had a good chance to get some pinches in, but they keep losing it up on the ta at the, the grenade launcher side. Agreed. I'm on board here with Costa Clan. We just got perfect there on Jolly Josh. Now shooting at this player in the bottom blue tunnel. I love holding this top mid position. You can just see so much of the map. Looks like that in mid. Just got all the heels. Just stole the. Did just steal that overshield. Now gonna get a kill on Bastion. Rotating up. He's right in the middle between their squad. He's just hunting around. This, this is the problem, right? Is that they gotta they gotta have some communication and recognize where these players are. He is just hunting and searching, potentially trying to block some spawns. Of course, all the players are still alive and he needs to sort of coordinate with his team to sort of utilize this overshield, not quite being utilized in the way that I'm sure he wanted to. Double kill out of Costa Clan now. Double kill off Jolly Jolly Josh going back and forth and 31 to 14. 40, they, they got to really, you know, they can't afford these trades anymore. Now we went from a three-point deficit to a five-point lead, and now we're sitting with the eight-point lead. Like, it's just not looking in their favor. Like this one. 40 to 34. Uh, yeah, so these, these, are the, these are our boys, because the ones we're cheering for. Oh, I'm cheering for all of them. <laughs> a lot of people, I think, are cheering for in Amber Clad, too, because they're just, they're the... You know, they're, they, I forget exactly what seed they were, but the banished was seed too. And so these guys, they're certainly the underdogs, and they're showing that they're here to play. You know, right now, uh, Costa Clan with 16 kills, followed by Flurry, 17 now. He's just going off this game. I would definitely be interested to see how many Acosta uh, kills or actually perfects. So far, I've seen nothing but that, that metal back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, agreed. I mean, when you can hit your shots like that and your teamwork is on point, and you can just see the speed at which he's moving to. He's just, he just knows this map. He's trying to collapse in all these positions, getting the perfect kill on Strali. Now hitting all of his shots here on this other red player, pushing it exactly the way. I'm going to get the kill on Jolly Josh. They're going to take that one 50 to 36 very, very convincingly from him. Amber Flat. Are we about to have a three wipe? I certainly hope not, but man, they are. They, they are really showing exactly that, that they're capable of winning this. 20 kills from Costa Clan, 9 deaths, 10 assists from him. I mean, the assists now on the board are a little bit similar. Um, of course, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tool's doing a little bit better in that game, but the, the damage out of Costa Clan, I mean, he's the difference maker right there. Take him out of the equation, uh, and, and these games are going to be a whole lot closer. The next one we'll go into will be a Stronghold game on Plaza. But, uh, and, and this is the last legs here for, well, I, sh I shouldn't say this is the last legs because this is double elimination. So even if uh, this Banish clan has to go down into the loser's bracket, they will get a chance at redemption, and we will see that tonight. But, uh, you yeah, know, I wasn't expecting such a convincing Slayer game there, but, you know, yeah, it just really goes to show you how one player can sometimes really take over a game like that. And with Costa Clan's accuracy and damage output, you know, it's no surprise they took that victory. He equated to uh, two of any two players on that opposing team. I would have just been a straight trade every single time from the looks of it. 16 kills. You can't just, you, you got to be watching that boy. <laughs> yeah, certainly, certainly do. We're Stronghold to Plaza going to be our next one. Um, you know, I, I love a, a good Stronghold game because. I think it combines an aspect of Slayer and Objective really nicely, specifically because it forces you into some positions that you might not necessarily like to be in in order to take a stronghold. And then sometimes guarding that is uh, it lends itself to for people to put themselves in to take weird routes, uh, especially when you you think about you know you're you're on an off spawn or you excuse me you have like you know you're down in, in strongholds and you recognize another team rotating you don't actually have to engage them to protect that you can rotate further take another one real quick and then rotate back around so if you're playing fast enough sometimes the rotation game is even stronger than the slaying game yep i would definitely concur with that what do you think is if you're gonna play the fast game on this what do you think the quickest way to go about it would be 
So playing the fast game on this one, it, it, on Nest, I think is challenging because, you know, the for one, like Nest and bottom mid, I think are so, so, so connected. Whereas uh, over in yard, like it, you, if you get stuck over in that yard spawn, it's, it's sometimes really hard to get out of it. The other the enemy team knows exactly where you are. So if you're going to play this fast one, um, you have to really make sure to know that the enemy team is really over a nest. So you dog pile over into yard very, very quickly and then explode. Um, you know, all from basically through cafe into blue. And I think that that's, in my opinion, the best way to go about it. But of course, you know, we'll see how this game evolves and whether or not that becomes a reality. Only time will tell. Looks like we got Yu-Gi-Oh's with the shotgun. Well, let's see if he can pull up a couple kills with it. I know it's kind of hard to actually, con or not connect, but get into fights with it on this map with it being so open in the middle. But picking nest and yard is the best way to defend with it. Let's see what he does. Yeah, certainly is taking this one by himself now. Of course, they're down a stronghold. He's going to have to just barely get it in. Then he pops that shotgun Surprise. from the back pocket. Woo! Love to see it. They now have a total control. And total controls in stronghold, especially with the speed and the skill level of these guys, is really dangerous. Because you can see now here, Gary is just pushing hard because he knows that these players are all over in yard. So playing this fast, fast game from them is actually going to be really, really advantageous now. You know, he's just going to look for spawning players and look for any of those little notifications that, that a stronghold is being taken. They're going to keep this one now. Of course, he's ready for this nest spawn. He's going to get a couple players there, killing them. Of course, now Flurry is hoping with his team that they can be on top of this one. But, you know, with his team shortly behind him, this, is, uh, this could easily, easily snowball uh, right now for the Banished. It looks like they're still holding it strong. Um, not perfect, of course, everything is a little dirty, but I mean, they're winning their fights they need to. They traded two for one, they took the hills. Yeah, great, and you can see now they recognize that that bottom mid is almost taken. It looks like Brux is gonna get the double kill. I don't know if that power up is up. It looks like it almost was, and Jolly Josh is gonna take him out with the camo, and they, of course they lose that triple cap as somebody goes and takes nests, but now Brooks and his teammate are going to take there. They're going to look for these spawners over in Tram. Brooks are knowing exactly what that's going to be, a player in glass challenging him, but he's going to get some good shots off on them. Yeah, 47 to 7, they're, they're really showing how well they know how to play this game type of map. And this could be the, like, if they win this, this could be that, that momentum they need to carry back into this, uh, the next matches. Uh, agreed. I mean, if there's anything to say about these guys, especially I know how they can come back during the middle of a match, is that they don't, you know, they don't scare easy. You know, it's the, 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 the momentum from what their emotional, you know, investment in it, I think is very low. Like they're, they're professionals in a sense where they're just able to like let go of a game and just play the next one. And, it, you know, just because they lost three or four in a row, even, you know, doesn't mean they're going to stop playing hard and stop playing the, the way they know they should play. It's not going to be a factor. Yeah, that mental tick is one of those things that separates the uh, amateurs from the pros. The ability to go match for match instead of watching your whole set is very important. Yeah, it certainly is. On here with Strally, who's fighting with a couple players. He had a nice grenade there, I think, taking out somebody more towards Nest. Of course, now a couple of strongholds being taken. Is that all three almost being taken by an Amber Clad? Rip sets hanging out over here, gonna go S4. Love the high ground position as he's gonna try and support his team going bottom mid. They're just very close to taking this, but the members of Banish are gonna fly in there and get the defend. That was a solid defend by them. We saw pretty much all both teams in that, that hill at one point. And they're still able to beat it out and keep it. Yeah, agreed. It really was. I mean, bottom mid, obviously, this sort of one of the ones easier to hold. But especially when you recognize that you need to jump in down there and just sort of put more bodies on it. Exactly what they did there. 94 to 7. Quite a convincing lead. This invis is up. Looks like Jolly Josh is going to go ahead and pick that one up. And uh, yeah, they're going to close to the Nice to know. Our next one is going to be Oddball on Echelon, which will be interesting. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at these stats. 
a very quick game, four minutes and 41 seconds. They pretty much had control of scoring the whole time, obviously winning that 100 to seven. This time, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools doing a good job with his teammates, seven and seven there, and, and everybody being very equitable. You know, Jolly Josh, seven kills, Brooks, seven kills, Jolly working it with with 12 and uh yeah i mean their damage all pretty equivalent as well so really showing that again as i said before this one of course the slays did go into their favor but just knowing how to rotate on the map and defend those strongholds is what took them to victory there oddball echelon gonna be our next one and Oddball and Echelon, you know, Oddball is one of those game types that, that always scares me because, you know, when you do have the ball, you're technically down a player. But what's interesting, or, or what teams elect to do sometimes, right, is like, how do you decide to play with that ball when, you, when you're in that position? Do you want to have your rotation with your team so that your ball guy is sort of like on top of the speed and rotating does he decide to drop the ball and slay out and then pick it back up again given you guys think you have the better map position or do you elect to just you know kind of scrappily play it or whenever you're going to lose position that you elect to say okay our whole team's going to die in a second i'll drop the ball from that we'll reset everybody will spawn uh, and then you get a chance to attack from ideally a better position uh, you know, and that scares me because, like, depending on who has control of the map dictates sort of like what's going on. And there can be some really, really big stretches of time where your team can get a lot of ball time and it can really spiral out of control. I suppose similar to, to strongholds in a way. Yeah, but you can never count them out. I mean, we've seen a couple wins or a couple matches through this uh, season, this league, this season at least, where, you know, I think it was in Amber Clad with 80, 89 points, but still came back. But from that deficit and still won. Agreed, agreed. And I mean, that just goes to show you too that like if you get a good setup and you know how to play it, it, it can be very, very hard to break. Uh, starting off here with Jolly Josh, gonna put pressure. We've got rockets, I believe, and Invis on the map. He's gonna grab these rockets just off the bat. One member of his team is gonna go down. The ball is gonna be in the hands of uh, in Amber Clad, and Jolly Josh is gonna uh, fall off the map with those rockets. rockets. Oh, oh do excuse I? me, I'm finding out we have the wrong game type on. Everybody is stopped. Looks like we're gonna reset it. Thanks for catching that right now, everybody. In amber clad, up two to one right now in this series. Make sure to get the right uh let me search. So sometimes this happens, everybody, where you set the right map and game type, the one, but baby. the game doesn't want you to know that. <laughs> and it thinks you're it's a different one. Okay. Bear with us, guys. I'm having a little technical difficulties with my Xbox. Yeah, mm, I yeah, just, everyone else before. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for being patient. Who needs extended mag anyway, says Taze. I know, it's an interesting, uh, you know, variation, of course, to the traditional Halo play because that extended mag, it's not something that I'm sure these guys who've been playing it all season long, like, I go to expect it and know how to strategize and play with it, but certainly when you're used to playing traditional HCS matchmaking and your clip is only a certain yeah. size, you kind of have a general feel for when you need to reload and when you don't. Do I need to switch the map as well? Or... Okay. I don't know about you, Snow, but I really hope Jelly doesn't throw away the rockets again. 
I have a feeling that that uh, Jelly probably threw away those rockets because um, he knew that this was not the right map and game type. Though, I agree with you. It it almost looked like he was making a play over towards Pizza, and he thought he could make that you know stabilize thrust clamber or whatever, and he just you know misjudged it. But <laughs> Taze calling out yeah. Jolly making a good play with the rockets. Would have been good if he had made that jump, but uh, we'll we, see. We we'll see if that was intentional or not. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully somebody clipped that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this broadcast. Thanks to all these competitors playing tonight. We really appreciate you guys having this Saturday night and clearing your schedules for us. And all day, really. This yeah, if you came true. out to compete, you, you sacrifice your entire Saturday. We appreciate that. We do. We do. This is the start to your guys' career, or for some of you guys, maybe the end of it, but this is just the start of match match four. <laughs> or match three. What? Four? I already forgot. This is game number four. Oddball. Oddball. On Echelon. First two going to In Amber Clad, the next one going very convincingly in a 107 match against the Banish. So this one on their last legs here. Well, last legs before they get sent to the Losers Finals. We'll start on board here with Strali, who's this time making a different play, not going for those Rockets. Going to try and contest for this Invis. He's going to fight with Cost Clan, but his buddy is there. Looks like they have that Invis that's flurry. So we'll jump on board with him as he's going to go push and try to get behind this squad. He does just that, taking out Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools. Now he's in a good position. The pressure on these other players and it looks like jolly's got the uh, rockets and some he didn't let himself go with it uh, he's done a good job pushing around he was actually able to get a kill with throwing a grenade at somebody you don't get to see that a lot oh like the fastball right i think that's what the, the metal is oh that's a great one yeah you have just enough health that the damage that you get from the clink off your helmet of a grenade okay. will kill you it's always fun nothing will break uh, somebody's soul more than that Gosh, I don't even know if I'd recognize it. Flurry still sort of rocking this invis very, very well, putting on shots though. That is a good job by Brooks, you know, sort of like playing that angle in that doorway very, very well, able to get those kills. Obviously these players with their movement and their jukes able to make life really hard for each other. Now, of course, the ball going in the hands of red team, they go up a couple players uh, and they're gonna position over here on open deck. They seem to have the spot down pretty well. Uh, I don't think Blue's gonna be able to push in any position that actually will work for them. I mean, even with Brooks dodging out, in and out of even. Did he yeah, just well, just as that, somebody got in behind them, though, and forced that ball to respawn. Of course, they brought it back 21 to 28. Now Brooks in a position for this ball. He's gonna make a play for it and jump over to where his team is spawning up through the underpass. New York Fuel's though, gonna be taken out, and Flurry's run into the same bullets from Flurry. It looks like Rip sets right behind him. He's not giving them any any uh, breathing room and taking it. Yeah, and they seem to really like this. Each team seems to like this outside deck area. You know, now of course Costa hanging out with the ball over by the Rockets and he's gonna grab the Rockets himself and still take the ball. Noticing a couple of players though up at open deck. I like this. He's gonna rotate back around, but Jolly Josh with the nice grenade. Enemy has the ball. That was actually a pretty impressive grenade from where he threw it. They're still carrying it around though. They got it. They they gotta get the ball. They do, but there's 150 points left in this game. Oh, nice kill by Rip sets there. Now moving on board back with Strali. As I was saying, there's still plenty of time. You know, the game goes all the way to 150, and with the back and forth this is going, and the the precision that they're you know going for, and is 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 proving to be that no team's able to take complete control and get a really big stretch of time. And that's what each of them is trying to do, make sure that, you know, their opponent can't really, really you run away with it in terms of setup. Right. And for the most part, it seems like they have somebody stationed near the middle for that play at any point in time. So it seems like they're kind of baiting if they can't even... Yeah. Well, it looks like uh, Raxon's uh, in a bad spot. Three players just uh, swamped up on when he's holding the corner. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools and his team spawning over by Pelican. Blue guys sort of have that top lift control over by Rockets as well. Really 
fight back and forth. Everybody like getting in each other's business here. You know, this map. You've been alive for a very long time down there, keeping them off the ball. Definitely saved them, saved them some points. Yeah, and this map seems to be that that they're not uh, able to like really get a good setup where they can control. Everyone's um, able to fly in and you know get in behind and between all these players. So it's kind of like a mishmash of red and blue throughout the whole map. Ripset's now trying to move the ball over to bottom. Pizza, a couple players are gonna fight. Looking back all of it too. He might have Jolly Josh with the rock is now on this ball and he's gonna spawn Gary over by the Pelican, but not a good spawn as Ripset's gonna get the perfect kill on him. And Jolly Josh is sort of like holding down these invis. The invis is still not up yet. He's actually gonna turn around and go for another kill, whiffing that rockets and jumping off the match that time. Who is this invis is gonna go in hands though of the Carrier kill. He's already doing work with it. He seems to pick up the, the ball carry and he's getting position on it. Certainly he's got is, pressure man. up on the side as well. And yeah. Strally comes in cleaning it up for him. Gonna be taken out by Flurry there as they're trying to move that ball. ball Looked like they were ball. trying to move that ball a little bit over towards ball. open deck, but not quite able to do so. It's just gonna be played. Now spawned. I want to kind of go into, uh, you know, we have another listening setup here with uh, Gary, Jolly Josh, Brooks, and Strahler. Let's move into them and just see how their communication is going as we reach sort of the middle part of this game. Gary is melting. Try to help you, bro. It's not all right. Okay. Josh, hold that. Josh, hold that. Oh, my God. I hold that. Two more. Two more. Two more. Two more. I'm rockets, I'm rockets. I'm rockets. Play it, play it, bro. Josh, just live as best you can. Watch your vision. We're playing for initial off point. One in blue, Bastion, weak. Yo, they're gonna bring a blue. Oh, they're trying to get aggressive. I can't kill Flurry, bro. One shot pizza, one shot pizza. One in the bottom left. We have numbers, no time. Blue plat, blue plat. Okay, we're good. One shot on initial. I'm gonna play this corner. There's the guy bombing on the bottom left, okay? Take the rocks, take the rocks. I got your cut off. Oh, top piece off, top piece off. What is that there? No, 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 Alright, doing a good job coming back in this game now, 80-97. Quite hectic communication there from them on this one. But uh, it seems to be working them for them so far, just you know, consistently calling out players, and telling them how to live and stuff. Sort of the same story, it's just I love the consistency of their calls in each of these games, you know. Just helping each other out. Um, Tom collected, you know, but but very, very vocal. They're definitely getting their call outs in the positioning correctly. They got everything they need as a team, they just gotta get the shots together. Enemy has the ball. Uh, Charlie's got the ball though, so hopefully we can turn it around. He's gonna play it. Yeah, good play there too. A couple of numbers of them down. Now Brooks is taking position. Hot pizza. Good shots on players. Yu Gi Oh! Tool's gonna get a kill as well. Now he's in a good position here for these shots on this. Love this position. And then they all just collapse in there. That's three dead for an amber clad. That Brooks is gonna take this ball and go back over towards. Pizza at open deck, and he's just barely gonna live. I love that play from him because now he's just very unaccessible. This is gonna give him a chance to get some good time on the ball. It looks like we might see a lead change. This is what they want. This is that part where it's just a, li a little bit of uh, momentum is all they needed to turn it around. Exactly. If they can get this nice setup, it's gonna be the case. Jolly Josh getting a stick on Bash in there. Now I'm jumping back over to Yu Gi Oh Tools. He's gonna get that ball out of the hands of Flurry. And a uh, nice job though from in amber clad like being able to sort of break that setup that they had there Not quite able to get all players alive uh, to no, really hold down that position. They did have to sacrifice power for that. Uh, with the wipe outside, they were able to spawn inside. And as you can see, Brooks was able to like the rockets off that. If they can click the, the camera as well, it would be worth it for them. Ball out of bounds. Ball in 
Incoming. Yeah, very true. Very true. I like him to play for the power ups and power weapons, and it looks like exactly going to happen there. Brooks now rocking both power up, power weapon, and they even have the ball. And they're going to try maybe try and set up in this blue room. Uh, it's a setup I've seen people have before. I wonder, you know, if it's, it's one of these guys like to do. But of course, Brooks getting taken out by rib sets when he had power up and power weapon. That was a huge play by them. Really missed opportunity from uh, the banished and, and nice plays by him. I'm really curious if he actually knew he was there if those grenades were just, you know, just in instinct at that point. Well, I, you bring up a good point. I mean, it's one of those things where you just expect players to be rotating and, and being in a certain position. And, you know, with the grenades being so plentiful in Halo, it certainly allows you to be liberal with where you're you're throwing them to zone players and pro for people. Yep. Plus, you count, you count the fact that these guys have been playing all season. There's chances are they probably know the exact strategy that each player is used to. That might be something that Brooks has done to them several other matches before, and this is their way of getting revenge. Yeah, certainly, certainly could be the case. But despite that, they're still able to take this one, 150 to 134, coming back with a huge... Uh, we got a game five, guys. Love it. Love to see it. Going into our game five, it will be Team Slayer on Coliseum. But let's quickly take a look at these stats. I mean, that game, to me, went super, super back and forth. And even so, taking a look at the kills on here, they got out Slayed, and Amber Clad played phenomenal. Flurry went off 24 and 18. Uh, the assists out of Bastion, 14, were huge. Also, big kills out of them. And not quite there for the other team, but their ball time was, was important was impeccable like their the rotations and able to just sort of like you know take that one in the end was was really really impressive that that is the kind of thing where you know my knowledge of halo like that's a game that i would go back and watch and say how did these guys really turn that one around where exactly was the pivotal moments that they decided to hold all time and then finish that one off especially because we saw uh, Brooks lose the power up and power weapon and normally you know, when a team makes a play like that They're really able to push that ball carrier very quickly Of course Slayer gonna be the last one here. What do you feel about this one rain? well, if, uh, if Amber, Amber clad keeps up what they've been doing because they have been out slaying them They could potentially win but like I was saying after that that third match This might be that momentum carrying them in this might be where the banish takes it. If I had to put my money to it, I'm gonna say Amber Clad. I have to, I have to agree with you there. Like in terms of just their history of slaying this whole time and the performance of Team Slayer on Regret that we saw in Game Two. But uh, I really hope, yeah, that that you know it's a bit closer of a game than that because I think that this uh, banish team is capable of. It. Of course, they are the number two seed, but. It will be a, a double elim scenario, so whoever loses here is not out for good. They will then, we will then follow them into the loser's bracket. Right now, tied 2-2. Two to two. I'm on board with Brooks, who grabbed this rocket. He's going to get a kill on rip sets, but it looks like he's going to kill himself as well. It's like it's not a bad trade. Uh, for the most part, he did have two players on that side. It looks like they, are, they might be getting wiped, so they might not be able to recover it. But they did... They were having the sniper as well. Losing one power weapon to gain another isn't, isn't necessarily a loss. No, agreed, agreed, agreed. We're on here with rip sets. He has the best part too. Anymore. Is you can account for Coliseum being one of those Team Slayer games where even if you're leading by 10, it won't matter. Uh, just getting the correct power weapons and quick rotation on spawns, you could ro switch this around real quick. Hmm. Interesting, yeah, we'll have to see how this evolves for that scenario. Right now, like the teamwork here out of Costa Clan and Rip Sets. Rip Sets sort of just like anchoring down with this DMR. And you can see his whole team rotating together. They're putting a lot of shots. They're just sort of like weaving back and forth, trying to kill these players as they extend their lead. And, you know, they're really playing the, the locations of the map so, so, so well. Yep. I've been kind of riding with Costa, and the, the nice part is with Costa Ripset, the last three kills, or the first three kills Costa got were assisted with uh, Ripset. So, I mean, they're working as a team, they're getting the function, they're not afraid to fight. Yeah, agreed. So we saw the hands of the sniper rifle now go into Yu Gi Oh! Tools as he's up top pyramid. Of course, they know exactly where he was because that was 
a member of the Amber Clad who just lost it. Yu Gi Oh! is gonna miss that sniper shot. Because now Rock is just spawned. He's got a good position up here, Top Cat. His team is all behind him. He's gonna be in trouble. Good grenades, though. He pops his head out a little too soon, and Costa Clan's gonna take him out, and that's just gonna snowball into more deaths for his team. And it really seems that that is the sort of the story that she wrote here, too. You know, as soon as you get a player down, your team's able to really collapse in on those others, knowing that you have numbers. It seems to be their strength so far. There hasn't been a single fight where they didn't have two people shooting somebody. Teamwork is key. You might be good at one-on-one, -on -one, but this is a team game. We ain't playing same public matchmaking, guys. Yeah, exactly. Very different, uh, different feel when you're playing customs and you're playing against a team you're used to playing against, or you know members you're supposed to be with. Still on board here with Strali as he now sort of links up with his team. He was kind of a little bit on his own there, you know, getting some solid kills. Koshi's gonna pretty much get a kill on his own right there as well. We can't count up Banished out just yet. They've only been behind by five for most of the match. They're getting the momentum they might need for it, but until they can truly outslave, I don't think we should count them out. Agreed, agreed. I mean, they're they're kind of keeping it close here still. 23-18 is a similar game, though, to what I uh, felt like we had uh, in this Slayer earlier, where we're sort of seeing, like, there's still a, a good lead from an Amber Clad, but the momentum not quite able to be sustained when um, the Baron starts to make their comeback. We didn't just put a uh, catch with curse on because they got the power weapons, they got carbine. They're up seven kills now from the five that's been. They seem to be holding top very well. They're controlling the map, man. Yeah, they really are. You see Flurry posting up here on red outside. He's got his team sort of around him. They know they're spawning in blue. Of course, no one's there to back him up. I really don't like that. Uh, Yu Gi Oh! Tool's doing a good job. Sort of now, him and Alex sort of oh, guys pushing into red base. They lost both Sniper and Rocket, this might be it. The, the key element of this game, this might be when it turns around. Yeah, it certainly is. It's just like, a, you know, they seem to have a good setup, and then Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, and I forget who it was with him, like, pushed that red corner really, really well, and they sort of overtook that one. Now bring it back to five, which is going to be six now. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools are trying to find a good spot for the sniper to help his team. And nice awareness from an animal clad to recognize that he has that sniper rifle, so they were going to try not give him any angles. I do believe I just watched Strally uh, stick his own ally. This might be <laughs> this might be where they're losing it, guys. <laughs> yeah, it tends to not be a great strategy to kill your own team, you know. <laughs> yeah, usually you want to be nice to the same colors. When you're when you're red, you want to kill the blue people. with Yu Gi Oh! Tools has yet to really find a good use for the sniper. Gets the body shot and the finish though with the headshot there. Now just gonna stay alive. He's gonna be pushed. Of course, he's gonna have some help from Top Rockets. He's just taking this corner. Gonna try for that one, uh, you know, quick scope there. Or excuse me, like, you know, flick shot. Not gonna hit it. Got one shot left in the chamber. Pushed his ankle back up with his team. Not able to hit that finish one there. Gonna back down though. His teammate's gonna go down. Nice shots. Good job staying alive, but it's gonna be not quite enough for him and his team. Uh, but Vanish lost three for the two on Amber. It's just not working out in their favor. They gotta get much tighter with the teamwork. Yeah, definitely not. Similar, similar. I think, back to game two here. We got a 38-29 lead from an Amber Clad. Amber Clad really showing that they know uh, how to set up and they know how to push properly, and just on average more so than uh, the Banished right now. Can I be here? Okay. Sorry, I just got kind of like that for a second. That was weird. <laughs> no worries. That's Back on board here with Brooks. They're trying to slow the game down a little bit now. Just trying to bring it back. You know, they're, they're holding the sniper side. They might be giving up on on Rocket's side and just using this to control. Get them to come to uh, them instead of them trying to chase. That could be what they need. Could be. You see Brooks sort of like almost getting caught between a rock and a hard place, but does a good job staying alive. Of course, now he's gonna try to help his team. He gets one kill there. I really like this movement from him, and look at how well he's just staying alive here, rocking over 
this red um, DMR side and just like poking in, like recognizing where they're spawning, so making sure that no good nades can hit them, not good shots. You know, they brought this one back now. Again, the, the lead is only five and, and they certainly can, can make this one happen. I think we have to count that to uh, Jolly playing Overwatch. Uh, he's had Sniper up on top mid for about 45 seconds. Getting good call outs. He's got a couple of assists out of it. That might have been what they needed. I mean, they're getting the four. This is, this is what we wanted in our finals, though, man. So that's a true clincher. Yes. Game five, seeing the two teams that are just equally matched. I mean, it's always good to see, you know, tight, tight Halo, right? It's no fun to watch one team just completely dumpster another. So it's, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's not that it's not fun to win, but I, I find it's personally way more fun to play a nice tight game. Costa Clan in between a rock and a hard place, but his teammate Ripsets is going to help him out. That was huge right now. Their lead up 47-41. Looks like maybe a cash was cursed to it because uh, Amber immediately took top mid from essentially all of the vanish. They just straight up lost that side of the map. All we need is one more kill. It's a question of riding who's going to get it. Yep. Looks like Bash got much, Brooks. Much closer game this time though. 50 to 45. I don't know if that was the, the caster's curse. I think just it happened to do with like a, a rotation thing there where they, they, you know, they neither team felt comfortable enough to stay in one position because they kept finding avenues which to get behind the other team. And, you know, both played that very, very well, right? Taking a quick look at the stats. Uh, 18 kills from Bastion, 17 from Flurry, just the leaders on that squad. Jolly Joss was 16 on the other side. And, and this time, you know, we're not seeing nearly as many assists, I think, as we're used to. Uh, of course, you know, it's still 30 from the 50 total on blue team. You can tell how focused they were as a team, too. Uh, most of, most of uh, Vanish actually got the Game Saver medal, uh, saving the teammate from the last last one to die, the uh, game-winning point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, very, very much true. Hopefully they can keep it up in losers. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we're going to follow them, I believe, to the losers, but we're going to take a quick break right now. This is the North American Halo League. We're in our playoffs right now. This was the semifinals. Congratulations to an Amber Clad. Going to take that victory in game five, three over two. They're going to move them to the finals. As I just mentioned, we're going to take a quick back break, and then we'll be on board with our losers finals. See you soon. Yep. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back.
Welcome back, everybody. My name is Mr. Snow. I'm joined here by Heavy Rainfall, and this is the NAHL. We have now just finished up our winners' semifinals in Amberclad. Took that one, three to two. And now, of course, we're following the losers down into the losers' bracket, where we have uh, Flawless Cowboys versus the Banished. About to get this one started right off, real quick. We thank you guys as all for tuning in. Thank you for being here as well. Biggie B in the background running all everything. David, nice to be with you today. It's always awesome to watch some Halo. It has been a pleasure. Who do you uh, who you got your money on for this one? You know, this one I'm not sure, right? Like I, I saw Fireboy. I was watching his stream earlier today. He was playing really, really well. This team, Simply Fear Me and Nightmare, also really solid players. And next fade backing them up is going to be good. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools uh, for the Banished seemed to struggle a little bit in that last game, but his teammates seem to be doing really, really well. So I think if he can step it up just a little bit, uh, their team's going to be incredibly powerful. Uh, Strongholds on Eden is, um, you know, a game type and a, a map that, like, you've got, you know, Top Cat, then, you know, a little bit lower, but not too much lower is that nest, and then sort of low but not on the ground floor is blue bend so verticality i think is going to be huge in this game of course that power up spawning right in bottom mid and it looks like brooks is the one that got to take it the first round this should be pretty interesting uh for two two reasons just to you know throw this out there for you this is another team that beat seed one they're the ones that kicked them out of the, the tournament entirely so this might be another story of the underdogs taking you know taking it to the kings but at the same time, we also know that the Banish has been playing really, really well on uh, Slayer types, or not Slayer types, on objective types. Yeah, definitely, definitely been strong on uh, Slayer, uh, excuse me, objective team, as you said. On with Nightmare right now, though, for this, uh, this, excuse me, Flawless Cowboys team that's just sort of really shown up here. I think they were three, seed three or four, and now playing tonight, they've been on fire. Of course, Fireboy being another member coming up from the D2, just playing incredibly well tonight. Now Nightmare and his team, they have the, the lead here. He's just holding down this top cap position. I like this spot from him because he's just not able to be easily seen. Of course, he's now going to get a good jump on Brook. The Brooks finishes him off. That's wild to think about. He had, like, he had first shot and everything. Now Brooks, phenomenal player, always talking himself down in the chat, but the man, the man can do good work. Switching on over to Strali, as Strali's sort of fighting as they take that top cat position. The top cat one being the one that they're both going for. Of course, he's now going to rotate on, potentially try and push for this triple cap. His team is over there fighting with blue members on the other side. Fireboy trading out for Brooks right there. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, though, getting a good double. This is going to give them hopefully a little bit of momentum here. Two members go down for the Flawless Cowboys. We can't count them up just yet. They seem to have taken the, the top of the, the catwalk one. Uh, they're rotating around, so they're getting the push they need. They might be taking momentum back from Hanish. Yeah, they potentially could. That blue bend could use a defense there, but through, as you say that, three members do go down for the Flawless Cowboys now, it looks like, on board and here. Do we know who's got it? Not sure yet. I know Jolly Josh put up this overshield. He's putting pressure over where that camo player would have been. And yeah, two members down. Now three members down again for the Cowboys. This Banished squad is really uh, doing well here. Looks like Brooks was the one with the invis. He's going to be taken out, though. Four members alive for both squads now. Fighting for this third cap. Looks like the Banished really has control of this one. Jolly Josh now sort of Putting good shots on with this light rifle, just lasering in right where he knows they're gonna be. Now rotating back what? up. They were they were able to get everything in the kitchen sink. Jolly with the camo, or not camo, the OS, Brooks with the camo, and then Jolly with Yugi got the last tools and they are can't strongholds, so now they have complete control. Yeah, he does. <laughs> now I like Jolly Josh uh, hanging out with his buddy over here in Red Nest, gonna rotate down. Just again, this high ground and using this light rifle so well. He's on a killing spree now. Oh my gosh, just look at those shots, getting those angles on those players over at Blue Bend. Like, seriously, even if you're just getting the damage and you're not getting the kills, though he's clearly getting both, it just allows you to do a lot of work in terms of zoning. But as I say that, of oh, course. Yeah, exactly. And as I say that, though, they're. 
Flawless Cowboys does take that top cat position, so now it looks like Jolly's gonna want to try to potentially move out of this anchor position a little bit. That looks like he's still holding to it. I think as long as they have the other cat walk up there, the one to the right on red side, there's no reason for him to move to rotate out or anything. He's just gotta get his team to focus and talk, take top cat or take red, or I mean blue. Yeah, you're certainly right. Now as we're on board here with Brooks, like, you're 100% right, because it looks like, yeah, he he was just still holding down that red nest and just anchoring that position, sort of controlling the spawns in that way. Switching over now to Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, who picks up this next invis. It looks like, or excuse me, Camo, he's trying to put pressure on where the invis might be. I believe that player from blue team might have it as he's putting pressure on Catwalk and get some help from Nico, putting in good shots up here. Not quite able to finish landing him off though. This is just showing the Yugo tool is still not feeling his complete self now, missing some shots. I think we might have missed it off screen, but I think one of the grenades that Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools threw earlier uh, actually did assassinate the camo, so that it's not on the map at all. Nope, that's not true, actually. Fireboy does have the camo right now. He looks like he was able to sneak away with that somehow in there, bringing this one back now, 39 to 55 in this game to 100. It's holding down. I love the little positions that they're finding, like right above that blue sneaky in low cat area. He's now putting pressure like right here on Red Nest. Get the first shots in that player brooks of course now the enemy knows where they're at though the couple players one player down from the banished they might be able to turn this one into a new cap and just as you said that it looks like they got taken out from it uh australia with the rocket launcher Right, but they were able to then make a play over here for this blue bend and top cat now, you know, continuing that, that rotation that we talk about, like, you know, Fireboy putting a lot of pressure on Red Nest, and then that means, like, off, off screen, his teammates were able to really make a nice calculated push towards those other ones. And on with Jolly Josh, who's still ha hankering, hankering, anchoring this position over in the catwalk area with this light rifle. Man, I just love to see this kind of work like it's exactly the kind of halo that i personally love to play so i respect it that's a good halo a good ass halo that's what we're here for <laughs> i have noticed that when the, when uh blue team takes the top they really kind of camping out with the purchase and it's actually pretty really working usually well and looks like the other maps but with brooks and that's or not brooks jolly in that spot it's really counterbalancing them enemy team I don't know if Brooks is doing that actually to counter their normal strat. Yeah, that could potentially be the case. Um, you know, that's something that these teams know each other, you know, pretty well. And so if you can see a particular style or, or way that another team likes to play, um, you can sort of make that counter. And on board with Brooks now, who's just playing the middle of the map really, really well. This came out, getting good shots off. They're just cleaning up, slaying out this enemy team. The blue members, of course, now going to spawn outside blue. They're going to be in position to take that blue bend, but with the triple cap in effect, uh, it doesn't matter quite as much as now Brooks is going to rotate around to the backside of them and sneak up on them, potentially try and take this stronghold. I'm not sure if I love that play, revealing that he's there. Though. Well, he never shuts. There was never full reveal. No, but it, by by taking that that starting to take that that bend, he wasn't really himself. Though, of course, as I said that. He had a teammate there able to come and help him with the rockets. I believe that was uh, Strali. And so it really worked out for their favor. So he basically got them all to turn around to their deaths. Okay, there's a three for one trade there. Four with Nightmare and Fireboy Nightmare is going to take the end of that stick from Jolly Josh. Of course, Yu Gi Oh! Tool is going to throw a nice grenade over from the nest side. Now, put pressure down here on nest. He's going to rush over and try to rotate through to blue blend i love that move there right just dipping right down into dip now over into blue bend as he's rotating properly as all the members of the cowboys are over on catwalk and they're just going to trade that base and that's exactly what they needed to close that game out smart play let them take catwalk and just baiting it out for blue bend it's what you love to see that's a good game since yeah yeah good decision making process right your strategy can kind of change just depending on what the score of the game is like and you know, and that one says, yeah, okay, fine. They can take that one, guys. Just take this other one real quick. We only need a couple more seconds left to go. And, you know, even throughout the course of that game, you know, we consistently saw that sort of rotation. And that's what enabled them, too, to get, um, the, you know, those couple total controls. They had three throughout the game. Taking a quick look at the stats, you know, pretty even in terms of the captures and the secures from both teams. Even the defenses, though, going a little bit more 
uh, in favor of the banished, just showing that they're they're excuse me uh, able to sort of take out a couple of those players who are um, you know taking uh, their own strongholds. As you had stated prior too, uh, you can notice that Yu-Gi-Oh is not on the bottom of the leaderboard this time. Uh, he's got the same, relatively the same damage as most of his team, so he's actually picking it up from his last last set. So hopefully this is what they need. This is where they turn it around. This is where they come back to grand finals. Yeah, for sure. Our next one starting it up here going to be, what is this one here? A Slayer on Truth. Ooh, one of my favorite game types. Really the the, the raw Halo, in my opinion, is, is a, on the Truth map because you have no real power-ups to speak of. Um, and more or less just the, the Plasma Pistol, of course, I believe is there. Uh, but it's pistols and your teammates and just the open the open board, right? It's a very little places to hide on this map. Now on this game setting with the NHL, is it the, the camel spawn over there still, or is it different, something different? No, I cam this camel stuff. still spawns bottom P. Yep, and you saw that plasma pistol there, I believe, being bottom of the car. Um, so yeah, still, still sort of the traditional as you would expect, no top mid position or bottom mid position or whatnot. Looks like now blue team though is going to take that first camo though love to see that i think that was fireboy who's going to get away with it we saw him with camo last time he's very very well on his team he's now on this p side sticking together with your teammates in this game type uh, is going to be really good or excuse me on this map specifically because you know there's just a, not a lot of places to hide as i just said and with a nice double kill out of fireboy looks like almost picking off the triple there too Good use of the camo. Like they got what was it, three or four trades out of that? All they have to do is keep that, that speed going. Yeah, for sure. Now Yu-Gi-Oh tools trying to fight with his teammate with Jolly Josh for top mid, and they're able to actually use their positioning very well to clean up those players and bring this right back to a tie game. Yu-Gi-Oh tools now blocking over this or helping his team spawn really over in that area now rotating back up through red brand to top mid as he's going to try and get some angles from the players who are focused over on that p side i do believe fireboy's sleeping on him because yu gi just snuck right up on him love that patience there too from yu gi -Oh tools just sort of like wait till he knew he had really good uh you know he's probably trying to go for the back smack but then recognize he couldn't get it and then was able to just get the, the clean kill on him there Moving over Halo's to Jolly Josh. Uh, Halo is not one of those games where people. What, what do you mean by that? For the most part, um, what we saw there was a good smart play on trying to sneak around. But if he had probably like pressed it forward or tried to go for an actual backpack, it might have been more rewarding for him. He still got the kill, so there's no negative to it. But it's just something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, I think, right, like, and it's something that I see a, a lot of high-tier players do, and I try to replicate myself, sort of like having that patience, right, to recognizing that not only is the kill is, is, is important, but so is the position on which you get that kill in, too. Um, and now, of course, Jolly Josh going to flip over to his POV. He's going to be able to pick up this camo, going to get the stick on it there. Of course, Flawless Cowboys are in a good position, though. They do take him out, and this game is just necking it. We haven't seen anything past a two-point lead, uh, besides the first 10 kills, of course. Standard. So it's nice to see uh, an actual close match. Yeah, it certainly is. This is some good Halo, boys. <laughs> Having that top control mid for just a moment there, now Flawless Cowboys is gonna, gonna retake it. Jolly Josh gonna get the trade there on with Fireboy here. And it looked like uh, Strally was able to shoot out, I think it was Nightmare who was above uh, Jolly Josh, so they were able to take that tower entirely. And Fireboy getting some nice slays there. This, this fight for, for top P and top car is very, uh, very consistent here, and it sort of proves to show sort of it's not really, I mean, you could call it a scrappy game because like, it's going back and forth, you know, like you said, you know, no one's winning over two kills, but it's very calculated in the way these teams are pushing. Just neither one of them are able to hold these positions. You can see I'm on board now with Yu-Gi-Oh tools, and, and he is just like holding down this car two area, almost pre-firing a lot of this area, these shots over at top P, and, um, you know, just really trying to zone, zone things out. You can zone them out, you can really... 
take a good map position and force spawns in certain areas, that's when you're gonna start to run away with this one. I feel like we just had a replay of that scene if you're following that. Yeah, the same type of thing. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tool is able to sneak in behind a certain uh, player. So I like too that these guys can play multiple roles, right? They can play the anchor that's holding down a uh, key portion of part of the map and then recognizing if they're in a good position to make a flank, they do just that. That, of course, time Yu-Gi-Oh! Tool is getting a little bit out of position, but uh, overall, I like the, the, the versatility that the team member brings to their team. Yeah, if, if uh, Vanish could just get top again, they can take the momentum. All the pinch shots they had were there were just so worth it, but they keep breaking. Yeah, we did see Invis uh, get burned there pretty quickly off the spawn. I'm here with... Missed yeah, we definitely did just miss it. It was very, very quick. I'm on board here now with Excavator. It looks like he is in a tough spot. Nice. Jumping from pink three down to pink two. These guys really have the momentum now, taking that mid control just as we were talking about. We were thinking the Banish was going to be able to do that, but it looks like this time it's in favor of the Cowboys. This one of moments where it just comes down to the whichever team wants it more. Good the shots there. And it looks like he's on a killing spree too, so he's doing work. He's... He's a very valuable member to his team. This might be what they need. We went from one neck neck to losing by six. Oh, by eight. I can't count her. <laughs> yeah, now up 44 to 38. I, I like the Excavate's movement there, uh, staying up at Top Car in a really interesting area. Now on board with Simply Fear Me, who looks like he's going for this triple. He wants it bad. He definitely ends up getting it. Knows this last player is in bottom blue, so he's going to push this toilet really hard. Not quite able to get to the stick, but that member is going to most likely go down. Right, his teammates are spawning around him, and this is a tough situation. Only one more kill left to go. This one is all but in the bag for it. Let's not count them out just yet. Till we see that game over screen, you never know. Uh, as I speak it. <laughs> so yeah, nice, here. nice double there from Jolly Josh, keeping it alive. But it's very difficult on a, a truth map to be able to pull that one together, and with the coordination and just raw skill from the Falls Cowboys, they're able to take that one. Simply fear me, rocking the leaderboard this time. 15 kills from him, 13 assists. Love to see it. But of course, similar stats on the other side of the board there, only losing the assist and the kill battle by just a few each time. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the damage output, again, pretty even, actually quite in favor of the blue team, I should say. 2,700 from Simply, just over 2,000, just about 2,000 for the rest of his team. And you know, only 1,200 there and 1,700 from Brooks and Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools apiece. So honestly, like, that looks pretty bad, right? You're like, oh, man. But considering how close that game was, I think that that just shows you the survivability of um, of the Banished is really, really high. I think we have to give a shout-out, too, for Strally. Uh, did you look at the accuracy that he had there? <laughs> All that damage and he's shooting at 70%, that's, that's actually really impressive. That is incredibly, incredibly impressive. All right, we're going to bring this on to our game number three. This time, Oddball on Fisher. Now, I'm trying to think. You know, Oddball on Fisher to me is a very campy map. It's really, really big, and it lends itself to some really nice setups. I think both of these teams are capable of those setups. And I'm wondering, especially because what we saw out of Strongholds where there was just a lot of rotation going on, and even that Slayer one, no one team was really able to set up. I'm wondering if one is going to have the dominant strategy for that over the other, or we're going to see a back-and-forth game as we saw the past two. Who's your money on? The, that's my question for you. <sighs> I can't pick, man. I can't pick. I mean, seeing the seeing the the slaying power there and the damage output and the zoning out of blue team out of the cowboys i really like it but i just know that the banished are a really great objective team too so i'm not i'm not gonna give you an answer <laughs> <laughs> Oddball.
Who do you think we should run with at the start? No, what do you want? Well, I'm gonna sit. Let's do Fear Me. Let's follow Fear Me, see where he goes for it. Oh, it looks like he's getting pretty aggressive. He did not go for the power, the overshield, but he's looks like he's trying to go around for a pinch on it. Yeah, and that's something on this map that I, I, you know, only recently, of course, being that terrible player that I am, found out that you can actually get down to the other side of the camo relatively easy. And so, of course, we're seeing at this high level of play, everybody sort of flying in, trying to rotate, get a good position right off the stop start of the game. Of course, that ball not being picked up, this is very common to see on a map like this, where that is so out in the open that if you start to go for that ball too soon, you're electing to just give... You're gonna get shot, you're gonna give the enemy team potentially a lot of ball time, and no one wants to take that risk. So looks like we do got our first uh, that that is well, it's kind of taking it. Uh, we did get naded out by Jolly. Yeah, and I think that was Brooks who was trying to hold down with that ca uh, carbine that angle to prevent that from happening, but it was a good job by the Flawless Cowboys to be able to just sneak away with it. Of course, they only got 10 seconds, but now they're racking up a little bit more time uh, as, as the red team is going to try and pinch them from a couple of angles here. Flyboy got that perfect shot, uh, taking Yu-Gi-Oh out of the middle. It might have been what they needed to keep momentum on their side without uh, throwing the ball too far. Ball. Oddball too far out, out of their favor. We yeah, and we saw a really nice movement there from Strahd. If he was able to pick up that kill, for sure, I think the ball might have gone back in their favor. But it is going to stay in the hands of Blue Team. On board with Fireboy here now. He's not exactly sure where the enemy is spawning. So he realizes, though, now that he is behind them. Going to get good shots off on Strahd. He's going to push that really aggressively. And not quite able to get the kill. Enemy has and that's a whole team down. That's not what you want to see in this game type. Nice, nice plays from Red Team there. Of course, I think Fireboy was a little bit alone, so, you know, his team probably not engaging as they probably wanted to, all being together. Of course, now on board with Excavate and Brooks and switching over. Everyone's just sort of piling on this, forcing themselves into this uh, top blue treehouse area, trying to Ooh. get these kills. Strally going to try for that ninja. He almost got it. It's pretty impressive to watch. Here is now, it looks like to be, this is a good setup, what we, you're used to seeing up in the top treehouse, Nightmare. With this overshield, gonna get taken out by the team shot. Brooks gonna be the final kill, final bullet on that one. And Fear Me's gonna try and rotate now out as they are losing that position. And, you know, as I was saying before, you know, which team's gonna have the better setup? I, I'm kind of thinking that my prediction is right, that no team's gonna have that dominating performance here in terms of setup. You know, we might see some big swings one way or the other, but they certainly can be broken. And yeah, that's one of the beauty things about this map. Uh, just getting getting between those positions, it's not as hard as it looks. Don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid. Yeah, agreed, and especially as we see the lift being used fairly well there too. Just like move your position on the map quite frequently. It's a good way to drop the ball too. That time it's in the air before it falls in the ground. That's valuable time to respawn. Yeah, very, very good point in that one. If you can ever be in that position, sort of, especially if you're down in the kills, allows you to do that. Fireboy playing a nicely done there, putting the shots on, letting his team get the kills. Uh, of course, they're not able to pick up the ball quite yet, but he's staying alive. He's going to be in this top blue treehouse position, which is going to be very strong. So now he's trying to pinch these red players with his teammates. They've got a couple in on the front. He's going to not quite win the battle against Brooks again, and that is now going to put the momentum into red team. They seem to be pushing in, but they still got player, blue, uh, flawless cowboy players on that side, so they might not get the, the amount of points that they want. They have to push back. He's got simply in. fear me with the tap back too. He doesn't want that extended. <laughs> Jolly Josh or Fireboy, excuse me, with the overshield, gonna get back smack right after getting a perfect kill for the revenge on Brooks. Two players down for each team. Looks like Blue Team wants to try and take that ball, but as you said earlier, it is very risky given how, you know, sort of wide open that area is. And he basically just goes and hands the ball right to the Banished. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Turn around, see two of them spawn. It's not what you want. Yeah. That might have just been poor communication. Most of their team was on the other side of the map. 
Yeah, agreed. And like on a map like this, you know, you would think it'd be a lot easier to know where you know the enemy and the team was, but that communication's there, and your map awareness is not there. Even just that split to second decision of grabbing that ball and running into one base or the other uh, is the difference, you know, potentially between a lot of ball time. I think it was once said that, that that awareness is five seconds of ball time or five seconds of respawn. Five seconds of ball time or five seconds of respawn. Yeah, could not agree more. Enemy has the ball. Looks like Wallace is going for their ball pull. They actually have the side of the map too, so this might be that moment where they can actually take the lead from the banished. Yeah, potentially. I mean, we saw, I think, a member of Red Team sort of play the middle of the map, like, throw his life at it, but now this gives Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools and his buddy a chance to sort of push this angle. Now we get a third player up. They got a nice pinch here. They recognize they have the numbers really a little pinch. bit. But in the back, though, another blue team member comes in, and this is just a scrappy, nice fight here in Red Base. That felt like revenge. I don't know if you saw, but Fireboy punched uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! in the back. A bit of uh, revenge from last match. Ah, uh, there you go. Setting up for this overshield now. These teams both know pretty much exactly when it's coming up, so they're setting up just the right time. Yugo Tool is going to be able to grab that one. Now he's going to push his advantage here. Nice grenade, and good job getting away from that blue member. Jesus, he cannot finish that kill. And now Yugo oh, Tool is out in the middle of the map, caught way out of position. That's it. That overshield traded for nothing. That was not worth it. Yeah, not quite. I mean, not in their favor. The ball is up now, and it looks like Blue Team's trying to run away with it as they get a couple kills. Good kill, though, uh, from I think it was Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools taking out that ball, preventing any more ball time. But, you know, we go into 150 points. This is all far from over here, especially the way these two teams are playing so, uh, so back and forth. It looks like the ball hasn't moved by much, so uh, I think there's still a little bit of fear for them to pull it. The Nightmare just killed himself after winning that fight, sadly. <laughs> yeah, no team able to really get a huge advantage in this ball. It has not moved very far at all. Yu Gi Oh! Tool is in not the best position against Simply Pyramid, so Simply will take that one. He'll go up four members to one just briefly here. He's trying to battle it out 1v1. Elects to sort of walk away from that one. It does look like they might have got split spawn on that too. Uh, hopefully, they can recover from that. Yeah, and split spawn on a map like this has got to be rough, right? When you're not even close to your teammate, you really have to make sure that, you know, the enemy doesn't quite know where you are. And well, it seems to be that's like the case. This, if there's a good communication, that's the difference from a pinch to a split. If, you got, if they spawn on both sides of the map, as long as they're aware of it, they can shoot anybody between them. The, the enemy team's not going to expect them from both sides on the spawn. This is true, this is true. There's plenty of angles uh, to be had on board with Fireboy. He's kind of missing some shots there. Ends up getting the kill on Strally. Three members down for his team, though. 82 to 94. And seeing another overshield up. This this game could very well go to time as we hit the 330 mark. Wouldn't be the first time, probably won't be the last. It does look like Overshield got wasted from that. I think it was simply Fearmeet since we had it. I believe it was, yeah. He was taken down with a back smack. Enemy has the ball. Hate to see it happen, but it's good place. That's good. <sighs> Usually good coordination. Yo, and you love to be there to get the back smack on it, too. It feels, feels very strong, even if you, get, if you, if you die. Brooks dying there to simply me Taking lift, as you suggested, getting some extra ball time. And that extra ball time is going to potentially matter here. 102 to 85. Hitting about the 250 mark. Uh, Brooks on board now, excuse me, with Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, who's up in the top treehouse trying to lay down shots in the opposite treehouse. They're sort of split with each other, but this ball is in good position for Red Team to pick up some more time. And he's going to elect to stay alive. I didn't even realize there was a little ledge there. Nicely done by Gary. That was actually pretty clever. Ball this might be where they, well, all four are down on the bandage. This might be the, the chance they need. Because uh, they're going to start feeling that pressure. This is the chance they need. A nightmare sort of fighting top mid, putting in shots, zoning these players. Going to get the perfect kill on Strali. It's huge that he's actually stayed alive in that position because it really prevented red players from making any sort of huge momentum push and forced them to sort of spawn out. 
course, now Brooks is going to retake that top mid position and take him out. Tight. We got evades still holding the ball. I think they might have just dropped it by accident. That, that's ball not good. Uh, they were still winning that side. New ball I think that might have been a bad call. That might be what could lose in the game. Yeah, potentially. Now Jolly Josh picks up a double. That new ball is spawned. Of course, they're setting out two members from the Cowboys trying to get that overshield. It is picked up. This time, no sm back smack. Oh, the Banish had to trade two for it. This might not be good. They did throw the ball. Yeah, and they need to get their ball time, though, now. Minute 20 seconds left to go. 108 to 121. This is going to come right down to the wire, I believe. Some huge decision making here. Simply Fear Me trying to rotate around. Jolly Josh, of course, knows he's there. Backing down a little bit. He's going to get help from the team shot. Of course, Simply Fear Me still in this blue room. That blue window trying to stay alive. His team getting a couple more seconds there. The Banished really just got to try and keep them off that ball time. They've got plenty of it. Yeah, there's no need to take it. They just need to defend it. Sometimes a good defensive tactic is what you need. Truly, it looks like they actually elected to grab that ball, take that position, and nicely done, smart play there from the ball carrier uh, to really take that off the map as they all but almost secure themselves just logistically in terms of how much time is left in the game. With that drop, though, it might not be possible for them to actually get points or the winning points. They'd have to hold it all the way to the end of the game, so I think we can call it. Yeah, and I think at this point you can see they're just nading it out and you find the time there, and that is going to be all she wrote. 15, 10 seconds left. Even if they had the ball for that whole time, it wouldn't quite be enough. Nope. Banished will go up 2-1. to one. I do believe that when uh, Nightmare dropped that ball uh, mid-fight, that was what really threw it away. Yeah, it could have been. I missed that one. Did he drop? He you said he dropped it, and it it, uh, it just went right it, into the hands of the off. red team. Oh, it uh, rolled, it just off. rolled right off. Oh, it was when they were they... on top, and they were holding it, and they they had gotten three down, but because he had dropped it in that weird spot, it just rolled right off, and it was forced respawn. Oh, that's too bad, especially if they had control there. As we talk about, always the like the difference of like dropping the ball and slaying and picking it back up again can be super super valuable if you're yeah. you know in the right position to do so. But yeah, looking at these stats, Strali, the 65% accuracy, 3,800 damage, 3,800 damage for Jolly Josh too. Very, uh, very equitable there. And the kills all relatively the same too. Simply fear me on the Cowboys going off with 33 and a triple kill leading the squad there also with 4,200 damage. So these teams played relatively well. I mean, that was really neck and neck. The 140 to 113 finishing doesn't really speak to how close this game was. I, I'm so excited that we've gotten a couple of awesome, awesome games here. Two to one now is up the banished. We're going to jump into our next one momentarily, which will be. Oh, oh uh, we just had a player change teams right at the last second. We're going to pull it back. You really got to give it to Strali for like as much damage he's doing and maintaining that percentage and accuracy. I really wonder what his uh, training tactics are. What his training tactics are. Yeah, well, you know, if I mean, something that always helps me with my accuracy is the uh, doing warm ups, you know, playing in some octagons, obviously. Uh, for those of us who are a bit older, sort of massage in the hands. I'm not sure how old he is, but with my uh, my old hands, I definitely need to give myself a good little hand massage, sort of loosen it up, just to make sure I'll, my I'll hand-eye coordination is there. <laughs> I'll be the first. I mean, I got a couple hand warmers right around my desk. Hey, it's it's what you need. I mean, summertime right now, don't quite need it as much. I'm over on the East Coast here, but uh, certainly come wintertime, sometimes I even put a little heater right by my hands, and it just it helps. It feels nice. assume that he was ready he switched from yellow to blue i just picked the wrong game mode is why we we had that problem 
Uh, All right, game number good, four. Good awareness. Yeah, catch that before the fourth uh, even started, or the round even started. Now we got Xfade with the uh, camo up top. See what he does with it. Yeah, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools on the other side just died with that uh, railgun. I like what Excavate is doing here. He's sneaking, playing this very patient, gonna get the kill on Brooks. Not even a perfect, but he doesn't need it. Now his team is in a good position. I would have liked him to stay in the base there for a flagpole, because it looks like they might have the number. Oh no, as I say that, they do not have the numbers, but Excavate still has the position for the red team. Now recognizing that and trying to push back, Excavate gets the kill on him, but ultimately dies. That's a tough position for them. Looks like Brooks spawned right behind him too. That's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, that was a potentially really great opportunity, but nice heads up from the Vanish to come back through and clear up their base. We get a fight with Yu-Gi-Oh and a Fireboy up top while Fireboy bowed out for it. Yeah, dropping down. He's the last member left alive on his team. He's definitely out in the open, but in a position where he's not going to die very easily. Going to wait for his team to spawn and be hit by a couple grenades as they're going to sort of reset. And it doesn't look like Vanish noticed that. Most of them have backed out from their initial push. Uh, looks like Brooks got picked off from the retreat. They are wiping that's three two down on all of the cowboy side. Yeah, and it's 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 nice but by both teams to sort of see exactly how they're pushing through here, like being very, very deliberate in terms of making sure they have numbers, making sure you clear out your base. I mean, especially in a map like Fathom, you have to do that, I think. It's very it's very rare, I think, that we're gonna end up seeing um, flag standoffs just based on how these two teams are playing. I would uh, concur with that. So far we just seen them kind of like hanging out. Nobody's touched the flag yet. I don't think anybody's gotten too deep in there besides the initial start with the camo. Yeah, and right now camo's... Yeah, exactly. He's ready for that one. Of course, you know, giving up a potential flag grab, but now he's sneaking around with it. Gonna put shots on strike. You can see he was trying to contemplate exactly what he wanted to do there, make a play. He's gonna get the kill on him. I have to now back down though a little bit. And just as I say before, I don't think we're gonna see a flag standoff. We pretty much do. Of course, Fireboy now is on board with his. It does look like they got there as return though. Uh, it's all this it did at least. Yeah. He's almost ready for that. You just need a teammate to just put can pop that one in. Though I will say, the Banish is really uh, known, at least from what I've seen, for being able to capitalize on um, you know, anyone pushing out of positions or being able to counter as well. Does not quite look like that's going to be the case here, though, now as a couple players go down for each team. That was a solid stick from Jolly. I don't know if you guys are watching that one. Missed it, but now we'll go back on with Jolly. He's fighting over in blue base. He's got a couple teammates, though. Their <laughs> blue team is trying to pinch them in, and they're doing a nice job staying alive. Of course, as I say yeah, that, he definitely just dies there, and they're going to lose that power there. position. Fight for top mid continues. Simply fear me getting a double kill right there. Now I'm trying to go for this triple. Gonna land the shots to connect on it. It looks like I can't, I don't remember who's the tag that is, but Nightmare is jumping right in going for that flag push. You can't outshoot Strally. It's been proven time and time again, man. Man has accuracy. That is for sure. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools. Gary running that flag. Simply fear me hot on his tail there, though. It had a good pinch to it. Uh, looks like the flag did get returned, unfortunately. Oh no, it got moved into the, to the base. I missed that. Yeah, it did. That was a really good run there, and nice grenades from their team to kill Simply Fury, who's going to be on that read. Now, of course, Gary's going to spawn and be able to get this one. Nice little initial, uh, you know, desperation move there, but it's not going to quite be enough. Though they are going to push very strongly into the base, slaying out as best they can to try and make their pull of their own now. Yep. And it looks like uh, x bank got the camo while well, all that the fighting was consistent. Yeah, and it was a good pickup from him. I thought that should have been a back smack right there. Oh, he is still alive. He's a little bit in a bad spot, though, trying to stay alive in the window. Not exactly going to work out super, super well. Spear comes to back him up. They get a good grenade off on Gary and zone them out of there. So now he's sort of pushing them into his teammates. 
I think we could say thanks to him though, they were able to get the flag in the base. They had it right at podiums, no capture, but can't count them out yet. Literally not. Can't count either of these teams out. Good there, perfect from Strally trading with Fireboy. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools running this flag with that power weapon. Switching over here to Excavator, who's going to be on the re right now, getting a good double. Not quite the triple, not able to get the re. Then Gary's going to jump that flag right in there to his teammate who spawns, and they're going to go up 2 1. Nice play from them. This could be that, that deciding momentum. I mean, that constant pressure, right? Like, I mean, even in that scenario where, the, you know, we're not seeing any clean, clean flag runs. We're just seeing, you know, like these, these guys just sort of bring this to a certain location and then just grenade it out and and really like like jump on that flag slay out and just sort of crawl it back to their base this might be it if they can't get a return there's three in their base once the enemy base on the on the front porch but it's not it's not looking good they got it inside to try to grab a capture good fight the oh, nightmare right then. What, are we, what are we looking at Oh, this is so close. Yeah, there's two members in the base there now. Nice pressure. This could be a serious counter cap opportunity now. Jolly Josh has to turn around, of course, to fight Simply Fear Me, so it's a good play by them. Fireball going to be taken out the other side of the map. They're going to tie that one up. 2-0. 2-2. This is, this is, we're on our tippy toes, guys. That was a nice counter cap there from... The flawless cowboys just recognizing how out of position or the really the advantageous position that they had having two members in the base of their opponents. It looks like for a second Charlie was able to take it straight to the middle almost. Nobody was there to stop him for a bit. Yeah, right there, not quite, but of course Nightmare pulling away with this camo. He's now sneaking over into the corner of red base. Strally though knows somebody should be there. Not able to quite see him. He's gonna not quite get the beat down. Gets it now the second time around. Now gonna book the flag, run it back towards his teammates. Gonna elect to continue. No, not grab the flag. He's gonna leave it for a teammate and continue to use his camo. I like that decision making. There is only a couple left, but he's now trying to sit on this flag at the re so his team can continue to push it forward. And nice job staying alive here as he does that. Oh, now it's just gonna be a question of who captures first. Strally's back at base with it. They just gotta, gotta get it returned. Oh, and that was a huge, huge play there from that, that team member. I forget who it was, but they were able to snag that flag. Uh, red team was just before they were able to do that, and it looks like the flag is gonna be read. Oh, it looks like we had a double return. Oh my god. What, what a standoff. Dude, the speed in which these guys are playing, I am having a tough time keeping up. What a phenomenal halo out of both of these squads, clearly deserving to be in the position that they are now. Uh, of course, we are in the losers finals, but man, they they've all they've won a lot of games so far in this tournament. When we lose, losers finals, lose that moment where it's all or nothing. I feel like these teams probably understand. At this point, it's, it's third place and home. really is. Simply Fear Me getting a good kill. His teammate's in there. Now he's going to run this flag as best he can through the treehouse. This time electing for cover, as you talked earlier, whether or not it should be through that pit side or through bottom mid. And he's not actually going to grab this flag. He's going to make a move for the can. No, not for the camo. He's going to actually go to grab this one, put it in the base. Looks like they might get this one, and they do. Whew. Congratulations, guys. Whew. What a nice one. What a nice one tying this up two to two. That means we have another game five. Damn. I mean, we asked for some good Halo. We're getting some good Halo. We are getting some phenomenal, phenomenal Halo. Moving so fast, I'm having a tough time keeping up. I'm glad to have you guys here with me. Because, man, it's fun. But, man, right, it is with intense. The 20th, this. You, don't see, you don't see that many assists in a lot of games. We typically don't. Yeah, I mean, 20 assists, 2,500 damage. I mean, even just the assists across the board for their team, you know, very, very strong. Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools, again, still struggling with those 9 kills, 19 deaths on the other side. Um, you know, probably making the difference there, not quite being alive enough. But even so, a 3-2 to two, uh, victory there is, uh, or excuse me, a 3-2 to two loss, given the fact that they were outside, is very impressive. Just goes to show you the objective prowess 
of the banished team. Fortunately, their objective prowess might not necessarily matter as this game five now will be the rig slayer as we get this one going. Haven't seen the rig yet tonight. Uh, it's definitely a, a very fun map to play, I think, because you've got that camo in sort of a weird spot right off the start where basically both teams are like really putting themselves out of position in order to go grab it. And that sniper out on nest, like you really, that outside, whole outside area from cat through open deck uh, into nest is just like a very tough place to push and be if your team is not properly there to support you so game number five rig slayer excited That's to see what, what happens wanted. <laughs> yeah if history repeats itself though this could be the uh the win for flawless cowboy they were the ones that took home the last slayer but they didn't win or they didn't win it by much i do believe they only lost by about eight points but from long as time in that game it was one and one yeah exactly exactly so the endurance uh that factor i think probably existing there of course starting this game off strong three to one nightmare has the sniper rifle or excuse me Yu-Gi-Oh tool does Yu -Gi -Oh. nightmare just died with this nice play by him that's exactly what he needs as he gets away with this camo He's got one bullet in the chamber right now. He hasn't oh, wanted to see that no scope, man. That no scope with just the one bullet. He's gonna like to put it away though. Puts good shots on this. Good double there, helping his teammate finish that one off. Just down for four to six now. I didn't catch if he hit that body shot with that sniper, but doing a good job staying alive though, despite those good shots from the enemy player. The angle he's at is a pretty tough shot. Be nice to see him kill somebody with it. Yeah, it certainly he's, is, but I'm pretty easily to go outside or come back inside. It's worse than he's, my dog. He's trying to rotate properly, right? His team's not getting the slaves that he needs, so he's trying to keep himself alive with that sniper. And so, unfortunately, though, it forced him into positions where he couldn't quite use it enough. Nice job from the Falls Cowboys, sort of rotating properly and forcing him out of there, and then hunting him down as Nightmare gets a double kill. And now that they have inside, they're going to be fully aware of that camel coming up here shortly. They're just going to maintain control. We're going to have to see how Banish breaks. It looks like they have the scatter shot too, so they got the power weapons, they got inside, they got everything they need. This is looking like a flawless cowboy team. It really, really is. Amazing position. This one lending itself to less rotation and more, uh, what, posting up? How would you call that? Anchoring. I'd yes, say anchoring, yeah. yeah. Same thing, right? Yeah, posting up, anchoring. I mean, they're doing a good job. It's like you mentioned, sort of this this inside versus outside. Is, it tends to be how the map usually splits. And through those, uh, you know, white hall, cat area, or you know, back here through T2. It looks like it's what they needed to actually break the, the wall of that wolf wall as cowboys there. Yeah, and they did just that. I'm gonna score back up now. Ten. He's gonna hang out over here in mid cap. Put good shots as his team's trying to get a pinch, but it's a little bit out of position for my liking. He's gonna try and live as best he can. Not quite able to do so though. Well, this is the guy with seventy for smack. No way is he afraid to fight. He knows he's gonna win most of these fights, and it's Team Slayer, so he wants those kills. It is very true. Brooks taking a nice little back smack there on Simply Fear Made Excavate just decides to revenge his teammate picking up the scatter shot. Yu-Gi-Oh tools with this sniper. Again, doing a good job trying to stay alive here. And there's the no scope that he was probably looking for earlier. Bringing this one back again. Only five kills down. Similar story here for their performance in Slayer. Let's hope they can turn it around this time. It feels like they're just kind of super Sniper inside. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! I just jinxed it. <laughs> yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! trying to toss that sniper off the map there, and as you just said, sort of the rotation in that sense, you know, really preferring to hold down the bunker location when you have that sniper. <laughs> Somehow, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools seem to set it back up. I don't know if uh, Fallen Cowboys just missed it. They had that corner for the longest time. And Camo should be coming up shortly. Some time 
is close to 33. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, it probably is about to be up. We saw a really great skirmish there from Fireboy, just electing to stay alive for as long as possible and had a lot of help. So now going to go like, up seven kills. Looks like Nightmare got the camo at 34. Yes, Playing a little he, bit of jungle gym there. He is just hunting for players and trying to play his position well. Gets a good kill there on Yu-Gi-Oh! Tools. One player down for each team. He's now going to jump up into this white hall player gonna get the first shots on him. of course charlie knew it was there but not quite able to have the eagle eyes that he needed in order to finish off the kill nightmare now just staying alive he's got his team behind him now pushing up forward he's a little bit far forward but he's got a good position as a uh, red team is just sort of fanned out quite a bit it looks like camo is out he got a good killing spree with it so definitely worth it Maintaining their lead, they're even progressing it further, making it harder and harder for the manager to come back. Yeah, exactly. And and this is what we saw. I mean, this is the same performance I think we saw just earlier with an amber clad taking it to the banished. Uh, clearly being the slayer being a little bit weaker for them tonight than it has probably been in the past. That was a beautiful bounce of our grenade bounce off the wall. Too bad I didn't kill Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and that information is key, right? If you can ever just, like, the, the hit markers for grenades is such a big part of this game, especially when you spawn with so many. Two players down for each team, their lead is still at seven, and if you can just zone players out properly, like, that's, you know, the information is key, and you get it through your teammates' eyes, through your eyes, and through any hit registration. A lot of times that grenade, you don't even need... You don't even need to know if an enemy's there. Just throw it out there, use it as a sensor. Yeah, and especially this high level of play, they know how to do that well. I mean, s some advice that I got from somebody, um, you know, at the level of play that I'm at, it's like, well, use your grenades smartly, right? Because if you don't have any and you need one to sort of back away from a fight or, or whatever, what have you, you know, if you don't have it, that's going to be tough. So don't use them too, too liberally. But these guys know exactly uh, what they want to do and how to push properly. So you're rarely going to see them, you know, using their grenades in a, in a manner that they don't entirely know, you know, exactly the, the plan and how it fits into what their teammates are doing. It does look like we have X-Bade with the camo and the sniper. Uh, trying to perch them off spawn. He's missed two shots already for it. Ooh. It's that third one though. Next kill Not quite able to finish off that kill, but nonetheless taking that one 50 to 35. Nicely done. Just looks like the banishers was not hungry enough for it. Not quite they, able uh, to do it. I do believe they missed misinterpreted the fact that these are the teams that beat seed one you can't count them out no definitely not you can't beat take any of these team outs congratulations to flawless cowboys nightmare simply we... creamy excavate and fireboy playing incredibly well this series and they're going to move on to the grand finals against an animal clad from what it looks like too like from just the medals that you can look at uh nightmare had a uh sniper list i can't even pronounce it Sniper the when you get two kills with the sniper round. <laughs> Snipultaneous is what you're there looking for. And yes, Sniper. I remember seeing that. He gets a double kill with the sniper at one point, and I was upset that I missed it. Um, but yeah, he played him phenomenally well. I mean, it's the top of the leaderboards there, 17 and 9, followed up by Simply Fury with 13. I mean, you know, we've seen each one of these guys pretty much go off in games. They're all very, very capable. And um, they clearly showed it there. Nice run by the Banished. You guys played incredibly well. You know, congratulations for making it this far. Unfortunately, you are out, though, now. Uh, so now you can just get the privilege of watching some awesome Halo with us as well. We're going to go into our Grand Finals in just a bit. We're going to take a brief break, though, get some players into this lobby, have everybody get a drink of water, and we'll be right back.
All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are about to get this grand finals started between In Amber Clad and who's our next team? The Flawless Cowboys. We just saw them beat the Banished in this next best of sevens. First one here is going to be Fathom CTF. They are going to call it a tie just right off the bat. Not exactly sure why, but that's okay. That gives us a little bit more time just to jump back into this. Flawless Cowboys versus in amber clad not two teams that you necessarily expected to see here right uh, rain like these are not the top seeds that we saw from the regular season but man have they played well today oh absolutely not like these are the ones that beat seed one and two uh from the sounds of it back to back too so you sh this should be a pretty exciting match wherever yeah. we go with this it's it really re hard to put my thumb on one of them because both series and both sets that they had it with those players were three three twos they were they were they were incredibly close close games which means like not one of these guys is just you know completely steamrolling another one and and they're kind of going back and forth like i think both of these squads are actually particularly strong in terms of their slayer slayer potential so you know obviously here with this best of seven this changes things up just a little bit you know plaza stronghold is going to be first one then we move to a slayer then we do two objective game types uh and then a slayer and then a capture the flag again with then a final slayer if needed this is just one best of seven here too everybody so not what you're traditionally probably used to seeing uh with you know three best of fives or a couple best of sevens or whatever it is this is just the one and done these guys have all been playing all day today starting at noon we had 16 teams technically asterisks to start uh but everybody thank you so much <laughs> for participating and being a part of this whole league, being a part of today. We're super excited. We're as always super grateful for everybody coming, watching, uh, and giving us some great Halo to tune into. Yeah, we're here to close this out. The NAHL Season 1, the finals day, be the best Halo to see for the rest of the year. I'm going to put it right there on the table. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and as we uh, fix the map here, the first one gonna be Plaza Strongholds. Uh, such a such a nice map and game type, I think, to start out with because you kind of like each team can kind of sort of start to feel themselves out. This one can kind of go in any way. It can be super super spinny, super rotational. It can be a little bit stagnant or anchory, depending on how you want to play it. Um, I want to start off with uh, probably whoever ends up going for the camo. That's the first fight here for that one. But camo and or excuse me, yes, it's camo, right? Camo? I think it's yep. camo and sniper that we'll start off with. And I love camo more than I do overshield because it really enables you, as we've seen many time and time again, for a player to get in behind the other team, get a nice double kill, back smack them, whatever it has you be, and really push momentum in your favor. So I think getting that one right off the bat, if unless it's burned, is going to be really important. It looks like it might be Fireboy is going to be one the camo. He got it. If there's no kill, he's getting away with it. Oh, as I say, jinx it. Yeah, he definitely it does go down. A couple of his teammates go down. Thankfully, it is not a Slayer. That means the first uh, red team is going to be able to get the yard capture. Now, of course, staying on with Bastion. So he takes up his S4 position. Going to drop down in on this nest. But it's, you know, being a 3v1, is not going to necessarily win that battle very easily as his teammate comes in and try to help salvage that situation. It was a bad move where they were just going in there for action. But he did. Got, went in and immediately died. Yeah, he did on with Costa and how getting a good kill on Excavate with using the barrel. Now going to get some good shots. His teammate can come help him out with this nest position. They're going to take that one in the total control, and they are clearly showing they know how to play this Strongholds map well. This is the kind of moment they wanted. It's actually pretty interesting when you think about the fact that these guys have been sitting out for a good five rounds, and they're still feeling pretty warm for it. Yeah. They really are, and like we're still on board here with Costa. I love this top position, this map being very, very vertical. He ends up killing simply Fear Me, dropping down, but he's gonna immediately go back up to Nest, anchor down this position, put good shots over on Fireboy as the rest of his team is, uh, you know, right to his right, sort of putting pressure where the majority of those players are. Of course, Blue Team now taking this opportunity to fly over in the top mid area. They're gonna take out Costa Clan and take control of the map. Now 
Now I've switched overboard here on to Simply Fear Me, one of the top slayers, I think, for this blue squad. He's now rocking down, gonna take this nest more or less on his own as he puts good shots on there, trying to help his buddy out, Sean, as these players from red are spawning in the glass area. He's gonna end up going down. That's three members down from his team, though, um, as they go do take that triple cap. Switching on over to Fireboy, rocking this top dip position, trying to recognize where his team is. Gonna rotate over to Ness, I like this play. Red team spawning over in the tram area, over in the yard. Now gonna take the verticality position up at S4. Some of his teammates are over at Yellow Pipes. They're gonna get a couple kills and they're really gonna put this one together. This is a nice back and forth here. They now have a little bit of control. They're spawning over in Cafe. And no one really challenging Fireboy too much for his position. I mean, he's forced it back down there, but he does so almost very gingerly, not really getting to be one shot. So they've really pinched and kept Red Team trapped in this yard area continue to rack up points and probably tie it. Set's getting taken out by that plasma pistol. Not considered a power weapon technically, but you know, it certainly can act as one. It's very quick to kill. Get that shot off and quick little headshot really can serve you. Blue team now takes the lead. Excavate putting shots over into the little pipes areas. He's gonna get to be one shot. Costa Clan with a nice grenade though. I'm gonna go on board with him as he's now trying to take this bottom mid position. Bottom mist mid in plaza is always super, super difficult uh, to, to really hold down. And I like this. I love the movement that these players can do. Just jumping from bottom dip up to top and him and his teammate are gonna collapse in on a nice kill there. They're gonna completely almost slay out blue team in this position. And, Costa Clan, and Be uh, Beast Chin, Flurry, and Red Sides are now going to have total control as they take the lead. 45 and count. Right here, Rips has his teammate with just another well placed grenade. I hear Biggie in the background just going, oh my god, from all these plays, because they are just making them look so easy here. That plasma pistol from Costa Clan doing work, zoning these players, keeping them over there, and that's another important thing to know about these kind of things. You know, Nightmare taking that, that camo, but he's definitely out of position. Still on with Costa Clan in this top position, top uh, dip position. And that player, the blue player, doesn't even know that he is there. Wow, just super heads up plays. Just the awareness uh, out of red team is really not there right now, and the speed in which. Or excuse me, the awareness of blue team's not quite there, and the speed at which Costa Clan and his, his buddies are playing at is clearly showing success as they are now racking up point 67. Counting here, quite a nice run from them, just controlling this map. On board now here with Rip Sets, who just took the position over at top nest. His team is all spawned there. They have that and the bottom mid. Usually the best positions, I think. Uh, to, to sort of secure a stronghold game on this, especially if you know how to hold them, right? If you don't need to rotate and you can just hold down and lock a certain area of the map, that's, you know, quite useful. You just continuously, you know, rack up those points as they, you know, they've only had, a, they did have a total control, but now with the two strongholds, they've been, they've been really furthering their lead with just this control of Ness. Bottom. members dead from both teams this gives us an opportunity for finally the momentum to potentially switch in hands of blue team i'm on with nightmare who's got an interesting location down in a uh, bottom u-turn he's not going to jump up top mid put pressure over on this nest area they definitely want to take that they have yard and bottom mid but i think they want to try and push for that nest area because it's definitely an easier spot to anchor Nightmare just kind of like hanging out in the middle of the map, trying to figure out where a player might be coming from. A couple of red members spawn over in cafe. They're going to push over there, and oh, that's what it is. He's waiting for that invis. Glad allows his teammate to get that, and we'll switch over to his point of view. His point of view there, that is Excavate. Almost gets the stick there, so, so close. He's going to recognize he's on with that player. He knows he's there. I'm sure he called out to his teammate. He's going to rotate around and get that kill. 
Now, of course, bringing this one back, stopping red team at 85 points. Blue going up 63. They have nest, they have bottom mid, and we've sort of just flipped uh, the spawns and flipped the control right here. And there's a nice stick that Ooh, he was looking nice for stick. earlier. Probably didn't necessarily need that, but hey, you know, he got it. Sometimes, like, the insult to the kill is what you need to freaking. Like, players that will perform last to break their soul. Certainly, that is the case, Rain. And now here, excavating his teammates. He, I, you know, I thought maybe that was a bad call for him to push right into that yard area, but it seems like okay. They still kept their two. They still have nest. The nest spawn. They're still getting points. That's what it comes down to. They just came in a little bit more to win. They have plenty of times to hold it out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. This is flawless. Cowboys on the run now. 82 they're about to take the lead what a nice stretch from them i'm switching over to fireboy's point of view as he's holding down nest of course just as i say that he dies oh it certainly happened you know sometimes i can get real good at uh, predicting who's gonna get the, the kills and who's gonna you know, make the big plays but when these guys are playing as fast as they all are it makes it very challenging for someone like myself but hey you know, we do the best we can. This might be the brick they need. That was a very interesting by Costa clan. Making some good plays there. Eventually goes down. Not quite able to take nests. 96 and counting. They need to take this nest right now if they want to stop this one. It looks like it's it is not quite going to be possible. No. And that will be game number one. Going in favor of the flawless Cowboys. Uh, the first step to a reset, man. I hope you're ready for 14 rounds of Halo. I'm excited. <laughs> you know, the endurance factor is huge, and I know, you know, Fireboy, I don't know if you're listening, you got, you know, you're going to check this later, but thank you for, for being so accommodating here to, you know, staying up late and playing these games, you know. We recognize there's been a lot of hiccups that have happened throughout the day and, and throughout this whole season, but we really appreciate everybody sort of doing our best, being as professional as we can be about this whole thing, and, uh, you know, hey, it's just, you know, the, your attitude and behavior about all this stuff sort of certainly helps. And, you know, as we move on to season two at some point, um, we'll certainly be looking for feedback and to improve on all the things that we have failed on. That being said, game number one, first going in favor of this Flawless Cowboys team. Game number two, what's it going to be, Dick? Looks like game number two is going to be set down to Team Slayer on Refuge. Uh, for those that aren't aware, Refuge is a old map that comes back from Halo 2, uh, Sanctuary. Uh, old favorite, people love it, as well as Midship. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely one that made its comeback in Halo 5. It's kept itself relevant over the years of Halo. I'm sure it'll make a show in Infinite at some point as well. But one yeah, this... this yeah. This one, you know, uh, we typically see it as a Slayer uh, game type, right? And especially if you're familiar with HCS, uh, the, or not HCS, excuse me, just um, matchmaking online, Team Arena. Um, it does get but, flat from time to time, but it's very rare. But Team Slayer, you know, I'm not actually sure what the, there's going to be definitely a couple snipers on the map, which given to all the rest of these is one of the only ones where you're getting an equal number of, power-ups in the hands right at the base of each team so you're going to see two of those on board at the same time and that middle ground position that ring three area if one team can really take control there that's going to be huge i don't see that particularly happening though with either of these teams and if that does um you know that it certainly can be disastrous for the other though given that you know they're so you know each of these guys are so capable and they're feeling so warm right now Yep, definitely going to be some entertaining Halo for this. Um, I'm excited to see what the sniper versus sniper fight is going to be like, or if one team is just going to break away with those rockets and take it. That's right, I forgot about the rockets. We've got rockets bottom mid, two snipers to fight for, a lot of power weapons on this map. No power ups, to my understanding. I'm going to start right on board here with Nightmare. He's going to make a big fly over to Blue Bridge. going to help his teammate Fireboy get those rockets. So I'll go on board with him. He's now in ring two, potentially trying to hunt for some players. 
little bit anybody watch for ring three? Uh, banished or not banished? Uh, in Amber Clad is able to take through that. Yeah, simply fear me dying there. Right to rip sets. Sniper gonna be in the hands now, both of them, of red team. In Amber Clad. Nope, you might have spoken with your team. Looks like he dropped it. Uh, one of them looks like they, they played out wait, wiped out. The uh, clip. Apologize. Yeah, flipping over here to excavate. He's got this other sniper rifle now hanging out over in red base. Looks like they flipped the spawns a little bit. Couple members of blue inside ring two. Now, I, I couldn't tell if excavate or if he found the respawn of the sniper or if he found the other one, but he does have more than just the four, four spare clips, four spare shots. Sounds like he got the uh, new one and the old one, so I mean, he's. He's ready to take some shots. He is. They're up four kills too, and he's just holding down this position. Not really quite getting any good angles here, though. Red team being smart about not giving themselves up to that. Unfortunately, they are going down to a couple players, though, one of those close quarter battles. Next. Evade, not quite Ooh. able to take those shots now. Rip sets on with, excuse me, now on with Nightmare. Flipping between them out. Going quite back and forth here. <laughs> Just deaths left and right. 17 to 11. These rockets are down bottom mid. Simply Fear Me going to go ahead and pick up those. Is he going to get the shot off? No, Bastion's able to kill him. Flipping over to Excavate. He's got the sniper rifle still trying to hold down these angles, but these players on the enemy team are really not giving lend lending themselves to any serious sniper shots of course just as i say that flurry puts himself right in the crosshairs of excavate and this and this map you know tends to be oh is your oh you're trying to fix your mic I was just going to say, this map tends to be very campy, and you can see the snipers just playing their lives, not wanting to give that up, especially Excavate still has that, but on board even with Kostovan right now, he's just trying to play his life, put pressure, Nightmare pushes a little bit too far, and they're going to get taken out, and that's exactly the kind of mistakes that they need out of the Flawless Cowboys to try and bring this one back. Now, they haven't thrown away the sniper. They still have Evade, or evade on the side. Uh, slowly pushing up, trying to look like it's a theory. Flurry. Flurry has the other sniper rifle for the team. I'm sure he wants those bullets. He definitely does. Now he's taken a spot over here. Blue Rampart. There is arches. His side. He's going to find the head of Costa Clan. What a nice shot. And this player who's backing in, and that's Bash. And he's going to get the snipe punch double kill on him. Now rotate back up, play his life, and pick up that next sniper. What control. That, is, that was four down and over by him, by the way, too. So, like they, they're taking control of the map now. They seriously are. Another double kill there from Excavate. He's now rotating through Red Ramp. His team, he has the support of it, even though there's a couple down and they're trading back and forth. That was right now. That was a really good stretch. Now up 33 to 22, moving into the later half of this game. He's got his teammate spawning behind him. He's going to elect to back down, take more of an anchor position, use the range that that sniper rifle provides. He's just being dominated with that. He's pretty much popping ahead with it. Looks like Central Perry got the uh, rockets too. I might have missed that from my angle. No, he definitely did. That was a big moment from them too. Also getting poured down for an Amber Clad. Uh, that rocket kill being huge right there. Of course, now trading off just a little bit on board again with the Simply Fear Me, picking up a nice double kill. He's now going for the triple as that player's dancing around ring three. That's Costa Clan. He's going to get the better of him. Now, him and his teammate do have control of that ring, but 39-27, they really got to step it up here. Yeah, it is not looking good for them on this side. Uh... Not sure what, what the new tech they need, but they need to get the super out of the hands of Excavate. Yeah, they certainly do. 
to be a quick 2-0 right here from the Falls Cowboys. They don't turn it around, though. They're starting to bring it up. 39-30. On with Bastion right now. Making a, a good push here, being very aggressive. They don't quite know where he is yet, though, of course, there's a couple members there. Cost going to finish up his kill. This is exactly the kind of pinches that they need. Even though he wasn't a big part of the damage there, his positioning and, you know, zoning ability there was huge as now he's getting his teammates to spawn down seven they're slowly cutting it they're doing a good job though just like controlling their deaths not being super super aggressive just as i say that bastion's challenging fireboy never a good challenge against the eu legend right. nice kill there though they're gonna go three down it's well, they're slowly indie. bringing it back they went from 11 point deficit to four oh well, i jinx it now <laughs> they really are. I mean, th it was 39. Uh, now I've got on board. I just switched over to Costaclan, who's now able to pick up the sniper. Simply fear me. They have now, excuse me, simply fear me has rockets. Two snipers on red team. Yeah, they're bringing this one back. They're now down within three. This is awesome. From looks the two each snipers on the other side of the map. So, I mean, if they can just get a good little uh, full of spawn, save the spawn camping, they can take it back. They can take it real quick. Well, they're taking great angles. Like with Costa Clan, the way the spawning works in this game is that it, it is electing to put you as far away from people as possible and then as far away from action, obviously. So you are technically not spawning with your teammates. However, you have a, a player, you know, holding a spawn down in a certain area with a weapon as powerful as a sniper rifle. You can really put good a good angle and good pressure on the spots that you know that your team and uh, the, the enemy is spawning. Excuse me. Absolutely. And the way this game plays is sometimes it's not even about the shot. If they know where that sniper is, they'll try to avoid it. Aaron missing that headshot there and a couple bodies of fireboys there to back him up. Got a couple members. Two of Volus Cowboys now. Nightmare taking an S3, or ring three, excuse me, position. Not quite able doing much with the sniper, but zoning quite a bit with his grenades. He's doing a great job staying alive, but as I say that, 49-45, this one going right back in the favor. What a comeback here from an amber clad. I see Bash in his rockets. I don't know if he's into it, but doesn't matter anymore. <sighs> Nicely done by an amber clad making that comeback. What a phenomenal show of strength, show of consistency, being able to bring it back. I mean, you mentioned they were down what, like nine or 11. maybe even 10 11 okay 11, 11 at one point in the game that is a huge deficit to come back from just showing that they are really able to work together well as a team 14 kills from bastion 10 assists leading the squad there but the rest of his teammates doing equal amounts of work solid damage between the rest of them as well the other side excavate struggling a little bit though he we saw him holding down that sniper quite a bit possibly not being as aggressive as his teammates might have needed him to be to take away that win sooner. I could agree. Um, it's kind of hard to really put the, like the damage percentage on Excavate when he's running around just the snipers pop ahead all day. Like, like I said earlier, being there, being in that position, being a source of uh, anti-information is, is another key to the meta. Very true. Very true is a key to the meta. Um, yeah, and, and now we're going to move into a truth capture of the flag. I don't know if we've actually seen a CTF on truth today. If we have, it's maybe only been once. I also love this game type. Totally different map, in my opinion, from Refuge. Um, much smaller, much less places to hide, and no power weapons. So just your raw skill of that extended magnum pistol uh, and the camo. Camel's going to be the key foundation on this, chances are. Uh, and especially as a server, you got to get that dig in the base. Like you were saying a couple matches ago, getting that camo, getting behind the enemy, getting the prize plays. That's the key to success on a map like this. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, I've seen it's funny. And I've seen in the past sort of the eagle eyes of players and sort of really being able to take the camo out of the equation, knowing exactly where they are. I haven't seen that quite today. Camo has made a lot of great plays. Some of them making them really, um, you know, making some flag poles and some slays and some rotations really, really possible. So I definitely agree with you there. I think that the way the way we've seen today work so far, that camo is going to be very pivotal. We'll start off here with Flurry on an Amber Clad. Strong player. We've seen him play super, super well today. He's He is unfortunately going to be taken out, though, by Nightmare. 
Oh, no, it looks like he was the only one on Camo's side. It looks like uh, Amber Clad essentially just threw the camo away. Yeah, interesting decision. I wonder if that was deliberately they were taking different positions to put pressure on it and just failed it. I'm not entirely sure. It'll be interesting to see, you know, what the starting strats from all these teams are. On with simply Fear Me, who is just barely staying alive with this camo. Elects to let his teammate finish and get that first cap. What a fast cap it was, too. 11 minutes and 20 seconds. That means only about 40 seconds went by on the clock before they were able to put that first one in. I feel like we could blame it on the fact that they threw the camo away, but it's hard to just pinpoint it. Certainly is. It looks like, though, they are in a position to make a counter here. Uh, Flurry trying to run that one. Team couple down. They're going to slay out. Excavate taking the double top mid as I go on board with him. So his flag is still away, but he's not super concerned about it. He knows where these players are. He's going to keep his top mid position. And now, of course, the flag is revealed. He's just going to elect to stay up here. Sort of call out players and figure out exactly when is the right opportune moment to go in and dive on that read. He does it just in the nick of time. Yes. He was five, just enough time on that return to keep going. It looks like we're getting another counter counter cap attempt. Yeah, you love to see it. A counter counter attempt, right? Like, you know, you push and you fail, and the other team pushes and then they fail, and you go back and forth. It just creates some high intensity halo here. Uh, I'm flipping over on here with Costa Clan, who has the noob combo. Pistol here, getting good shots off on them. Able to chip some serious damage as his team will take four blue base. Damage out there, it looks like Battle able to finish up the kills. This should equate to a point there shortly. I do believe simply fear me. Oh, Pasta Clan got the camo and then back to his base with it. Let's see what he's gonna be able to do with it. Yeah, and I was on board there with Bastion for just a moment as he died and made a pull for that flag. Not probably a pull that was necessarily going to turn it into anything, but a good good way to like sort of draw the enemy back to the base. Switching over here to Ripset, sort of guarding his base as well, recognizing that these blue players, these flawless cowboys, are really pushing very, very strong. And just as they get that slay, even though they go do down, blue is still making a push for this flag. Excavate now, electing to sort of turn around and put some shots in, potentially let his teammates spawn. That flag is down bottom key, and some would say that's a pretty difficult place to make the pull, but these guys are able to slay out properly. They know exactly what they need in order to do so. And as I say that sort of now both flags being run in the same direction yeah it, it seems like the perfect decision on a counter cap to kind of take it the other direction just slow, slow and pressure uh, just uh, pressure slow to relieve the pressure. um Yeah, and I was on board there for Fl with Flurry for a moment as he was sort of electing to sort of stay in the enemy's base as opposed to help his teammate capture that one just a brief uh, you know, fight over there, losing it like a nice little overextend, but not quite able to do it. And Red Team will tie it right back up. Just as I say that, of course, Flurry gets a nice double kill on a stick, clearing out that base. That's three members down for Flawless Cowboys. This is, this is that momentum that they need, man. They're getting, they're getting the kills this time. But they're just not getting enough uh, coordination and, and proper polling time. Yeah, they need to be in these positions, exactly. Classic Clan just hanging out top mid. This is where he needs to be. Then he needs some players down, you know, on the ground floor. Of course, he's going to set up for that camo. He grabs it right now. And he's, yeah, hopefully this is an opportune moment where he can sort of make something happen. Of course, that grenade's going to reveal him a little bit. And you can see those enemy blue players are just hunting for him, searching for them with their pistol shots. They find him a little bit. And, He's, you know, able to stay alive here, but he's not really able to do much as of right yet. He's gonna, though, use that plasma pistol to yeah, good effect and get a kill on him. It, it definitely did. And like we were talking about earlier, he's doing the smart move of uh, trying to get behind his team. Uh, this would equate to an official triple kill. I mean, he's cleaning up the team. That's three down. Yeah, there really is. Now, of course, the three down is going to go from his team. Double kill out of Flurry on board with Ripsets. 
he's now in a position to pull this flag if that player can get a pull. Oh, he elected to go the other way. I'm not sure I would have agreed with that necessarily. I was thinking he was going to pull it towards his teammate because he's going to run into spawners. With the position they, positions they had, it feels like the position would have been just throw it to the bad pool. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Throw it to the guy where I'm shooting. What? Uh, in the middle. Up at the top. Oh, at the top. Yeah, potentially. Always throwing that flag top mid is, uh, I always get confused by it because I never expect people to do it. But it definitely is a really fast way and you have that high ground position, you just kind of like volley the flag for somebody who should be at top mid position anyway and you can get a cap really, you know, almost, I would say under the nose, but it's really through the skies um, for the <laughs> other team. I like, I like that turn of thought. And just straight to the skies. <laughs> just straight to the skies, right? Like, yeah, forget <laughs> running it on the ground. Just throw it in the air. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need thrusters or feet, man. We'll fly it. Just fly it over. Just fly it over. Everyone expects you to run low. Instead, you they... go low, you go high. <laughs> it looks like they are prepping for the next uh, camo. Those look like I don't, I don't believe it's up. I didn't get a chance to time the first time. Uh, it's in the hands of Flurry, actually, right now. He gets a kill. A couple members, though, of his team are down. He's up in top P. Going to elect to go P3. It looks like there's a player right below him. He doesn't even see him. Going to try and zone this guy out of top mid. They get the kill there. Flurry just more or less just being a body here for his team as he's trying to take control of top mid though. Good job by the Falls Cowboys for not quite letting them really take over here even though they have this camo. They were able to take that tower though at the end. It seems a flag was pulled but nothing's coming from it. Maybe it was just failed to throw it mid. Potentially, but they look, they have the momentum exactly as you pointed out, even right at the end of the camo. They were able to take that top mid position, and of course, now pushing into the base is in amber clad. And they just start their run right now. Now they gotta play the game of Russian roulette to find out which side they spawn. Let's make sure they go safely with that flag. Yeah, it seems that they knew they spawned over on that bubble side. Moving on here with rep sets. He was just in a good position to just drop down and make a touch, which looks like he will do just that. And keep this flag alive for them. A blue team flag is still just kind of hanging out down there now. They're across the porch. For lack of a better call out for it. <laughs> yeah, front porch, front yard. It's definitely right in the front, the kind of no man's land. Almost you never want to be down there. Definitely see some players trying to like hide behind those those little pillars there and, and bottom for certain angles, but certainly with the bases and the two towers being at higher position, it's not likely you're gonna live for long up there. Beautiful grenades there from Excavate, getting those kills, picking up the camo, but if Costa Clan's gonna get the better of them on that one, and that will be burned. And that might be the deciding factor on what helps them, or what loses in the game. They were able to get the cat flag last time with the camel. Let's see what they can do without it. Very, very good point. I flipped over here to Fireboy, who's chasing this player. Rip sets up. They're going to get three down there, and he is being very aggressive. This is exactly what he wants. He wants to make a pull here. Yes, there's three down, like you said. Like this, this is that time to pull it. You can't be afraid. No, but I like what he did there. He did elect not quite to pull it because he recognized, you know, these players are counting. They know exactly what the spawn times are. Of course, we can see the player outlines on our screen, and we've got the little X's on the left and right-hand side. They don't, they have to keep track of that stuff in their head. And I like what he did there. He didn't quite pull it, but turned around and started to slay. They did get the flag on their side. This, this might be a good attempt. Uh, grenades galore coming out. They try to maintain that position. Certainly is, and there's a good touch there by Fireboy. His team now just sort of stacking in it. They're going to go up 2 0, sort of dogpiling this one, though. This could be the opportunity for an Amberclad to sort of make a counter. Will, though, be tough when they were just down to the players. Now that they got that capture and they've taken the lead, all they really have to do is just play smart defense. Uh, they can get aggressive and go for the flag if they really if they're feeling cocky for it, but two minutes left, I find out the wisest decision. Yeah, agreed. 
think if an armor clad wants to make a good comeback, they're going to have to do a good push for this camo, which should probably be coming up momentarily. Uh, that's the third time that uh, Amber Clad has elected to throw the flag out the front door uh, with no no recourse from it. I'm not sure there's a strategy that they're failing on or if it's bad communication. Yeah, you know, I, it's one of the things I think, you know, in desperation mode, you're kind of just trying to make a pull, make a play, and throwing it out the middle could be something that sort of distracts your opponent, you know, sort of lets them put them sort of a little bit out at ease or, or you know, hesitant to make any different moves if that flag, you know, is gone and they're about to lose. But I think with the, the caliber of play that these guys are at, they're not going to get scared by a move like that. I would agree. There's the fourth time though. Let's see if, it, if something comes out of it. They got a minute left. That feels like you gotta, you gotta pull it. You gotta run with that boy. Yeah, I mean, given to you know, also to, to their credit, it could be the case where, well, and that's gonna be game. Just as the counter happens there, I was gonna say to their credit, it could be a part of the strategy that they have. You know, pulling that out, sort of staying along the outside edges, slaying out, and getting a player to drop down in there and. and run it very very quickly though did not quite work for them in that one uh this game going to be going to the flawless cowboys that was a good match though it was plenty of to see uh, it was real back and forth till the end and we got a full what 15 minutes out of that 12 minutes i don't know what the timer is oh pasta yeah. with the 15 kills look at that boy Asta clan with 35 kills yes 17 I assists 19 deaths wow we can make kind of a, a a wide statement on this if you look at fireboy fireboy performed with had higher damage than any other player but he had the least kills and, and kind of lower on the assist scores that kind of tells us that chances are he was getting a lot of damage out there but he wasn't finishing any kills and that could equate to the reason why they were losing flags yeah, it very well could have been. I mean, the uh, you know they did end up taking that one three to one. Um, you know, ultimately at the end though, I think that being able to zone players because damage rate has that effect. I think where the the last thing you really think about is that if you do put out that much damage, even if you aren't getting the kills, you're still forcing players back into places they might not necessarily want to be. Um, though I, I will tend to agree with you. I think it's always disheartening to see a game like that where you have so much damage and not a lot of kills and not a lot of assists. And you think, man, what am I doing wrong here? Am I just like fighting off in my own little world and not really supporting the rest of my team? Um, I'd be interested, yeah, to look back at the footage of that and just kind of see, yeah, where was he putting his energy? Could that damage have been put somewhere else that would enable them to win that game a little bit quicker? Yeah. I feel like we probably shouldn't pressure them too much. I mean, they did win. Um, teamwork played out. Oh, 100%. 100%. I mean, yeah, phenomenal performance. I mean, that's exactly what I say. Moving on now. Fisher Oddball going to be the next one. Taking a quick little break for just a moment. Simply fear me. Probably goes to grab some water. Fisher Oddball, we saw this one um, just last series, I believe, and it plays kind of exactly as you'd almost expect it, where the team who's able to grab that ball and hunker down in one of the tree houses is going to be the one that you know, comes away with it the most. And, and holding down those tree houses is a hard position to beat. It's very hard to get in there uh, and break that up. But the map is so large that sometimes, you know, if you have players that aren't, you know, your ball guy might actually be very far away from your supporting players. It might be such that your ball guys hang out sort of in the back of treehouse or whatnot. And there's somebody all the way down at the other end of, of red tech. And if that player gets pushed by a couple, he's all alone. They're able to sort of hopefully make their momentum up into that door and over into that area. So that being said, sometimes, you know, uh, the, it's then very easy for that ball to just fall off the map. That player can say, okay, just going to reset this one and put it back top mid as we've seen top mid is such a cluster. Yep. Top mid is also this, or not top mid, the uh, corners are where we saw the, which player it was. I just remember it was the banish where the ball rolled off by accident and it cost him the game. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. while you got to be aware of your opponents, you got to be aware of yourself too. Costly mistakes like that, that's how you lose, lose a series. 
Yeah. Yeah. And having that decision making, right. Sometimes you want that ball to fall off the edge because, you know, your team's all dead and you don't want to give that into the hands of the enemy team right away. Uh, you want to spawn and hopefully have a chance at it from a different position. But in a case where you maybe do have numbers and you just, you die because you're holding the ball and you decide to drop it to help slay and then it falls off the map. Well, that gives the enemy a potential opportunity to make a play. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, this is also the one one of the maps with the uh, overshield. So you got to be aware of not only the ball, but the timer on that. And if your opponent has it, their positioning, just where they're coming from, what they're focused on. Like that o the OS equates to you, you could usually wipe out a team with it if you're careful. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. I mean, having the ability to soak up more damage is always good. So, you know, it's it's funny because that's one of the only sort of close quarter battles that tend to happen, you know, um, you know, I suppose unless someone's being crazy uh, aggressive. So the nades flying in that bottom mid area, the back smacks potential. We saw that quite a bit happen in the past. And, uh, you know, it, it creates a, a really interesting uh, area for engagement because you sometimes you just don't know who's going to come on top, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's definitely like a little intimate cave down there that you got to be careful with. You get too close to your opponent, you, you're just gonna you're gonna regret that real quick. Yeah, this sort of takes away from the the value that that overshield might have had to begin with. But all right, we are good to go. Simply fear me is back. Fisher Oddball gonna be the next one. Follows Cowboys up two to one in this best of seven grand finals from the North American Halo League. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to all the players who have played in the past, who are playing right now. Um, you know, this has just been, I've only joined you guys over the past couple of weeks, but so far the level of play uh, and, you know, the experience that you guys all bring to force me to understand how, to, how these games work has, has been, you know, invaluable. So I super, super appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for what we've seen too on the production side, uh, that team has really been really kill killing it, pumping out the graphics and getting it all ready. Like, that's that's the hard task. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Players just sit at home and play with the controller. You got to make that graphic go. People want the scoreboard. <laughs> all right, jumping on board here with Flurry, who's gonna make a play immediately for this bottom mid oh, camo. And Bastion did snag it. The couple of members going to go down for the Flawless Cowboys. Bastion now going to grab this ball. Their team is going to be in position to grab it very, very quick. This is the quickest I think I've seen a ball pull, uh, you know, in these games. That was three down for a short period of time. Well, there goes the camo from Bastion, so hopefully we'll see something from up. Yeah, good use out of it, though. I think now he's grabbed the ball. He's able to, like you said, to slay their team out doing it. Uh, and now he's going to put good shots Ooh, on. Way to stay alive. Yeah, nicely done there. Cost is going to pick up the double. Bastion's going to grab some more ball time now. He's going to elect to just play that ball and even stay alive. What a plays by Bastion in service. Game. That, is, that is how you create value for your team right there. Seriously, staying alive in that position that he's in is just phenomenal. I've switched now back over on to Fireboy's side of things. Four Falls Cowboys as he's being pushed in the back. Unfortunately, falls right off the map as an Amberclad notices that he is in a great power position and they need to get him out of it. Oh, Bastion seems to have missed another jump. It seems to be a uh, team favorite to miss this spot. <laughs> I think uh, from the set we've watched earlier, that's about four people that have died from that spot just from missing that jump. It's a tough one to make. It's not, and especially on a map like this, I'm not sure how often teams are practicing or playing this one. It's not personally one of my favorites to play, and, and part of it's, you know, I think just because it's just so much bigger, or it feels at least so much bigger than the other maps, so it, it confuses me, and Oddball is not one of my strengths, but uh, certainly when you're uh, faced with you know, having to make good jumps on maps to fall off the, to the edge of the map. You gotta be, uh, you gotta be on point with that practicing at this high level and at this speed that these guys are playing at. Yep. I would even elect to say that part of the, it's kind of hard to, to train a map when most of the maps that we play in this rotation are ones that have been either at launch or within updates. While well, this one came out pretty recently, at least uh, for the HDS days. 
Like you compare it to Fathom or, or the I forget what the Sanctuary remake is. We've had those for like what the four years of the life of Halo. Mm -hmm. This one we, they've only had for about a year and a half. Yeah, very very true. The time you spent grinding on a map, the more you get to know its ins and outs. This one has a lot of that. Streams have now had an opportunity. Just After because of how long it is. Yeah, exactly. On board now here with. Oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I agree. You're good. Come back. I was going to say, on board here with Cosclan is making some good plays down bottom mid. Going to put pressure on this ball as the ball is Cowboys just sort of barely bringing it back here. Of course, all three of them there. Cosclan put on good damage. He's going to need some help from his team to finish up those kills, but this could be good momentum if they're able to clean this play up. Looks like we got Ripset that I like to take a DMR over the, the extended mag. I wonder if he just has, he, he prefers that feel to it. Yeah, could very build. Could be there's one of his teammates had that. Could be, I mean, it does give you a little bit of a lengthier, um, you know, range. Of course, if you're trying to play that anchor position. Seems we finally got another uh, ball push. From the looks of it too, like they're actually keeping it this time. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I like what I'm seeing at a bash now. The way he rotated through that um, into the red side, he just you know using almost. I don't want to say he was baiting his teammates because it's probably not true in the true sense of a bait. But he was just using their position and his knowledge of where the enemy was to be able to get in there and do a good flank. And he dies right there, but his team had a really good string where they picked up some good ball points. I would say fair trade. Yeah, certainly the case. And of course now Fireboy trying to play his life and scrap up a little bit more ball time as he's sort of alone there. Looks like simply Jimmy might actually be in a ball. Uh, he's fighting, but it looked like he was in a position that can just take the ball right on the spawn. It's not something you get to see a lot of in this one. No, given that top mid is never a place you usually wish to hang out. Nightmare, though, being able to sneak away from it, grabbing the ball, and staying alive, getting some shields back. He's going to be pinched on very quickly, but not before picking up a good another little chunk of time. Very scrappy game back and forth here. and That ball carrier is going to lift right up there. That's Fear Me. Reckless going to get the double kill across the clan. And just scrapping up a little bit of time. <laughs> it's like we talked about earlier. Sometimes that lift is couple seconds more the time it takes that ball to fall that's enough time for you to respawn and be back in position for your team yeah it really is i'm gonna go on board here with excavate who's got this um carbine He's hanging out top in mid in an interesting spot just like trying to put some good damage potentially yeah not entirely sure what he was looking to do there though gets the nice nade shot on ripsats and now staying alive up top mid he's doing phenomenal this game with a good amount of kills pushing this area and getting the headshot on Costa Clan, he is really enabling his team right here to make a play for that ball. He is really sort of annoying and killing a lot of these players almost by himself. Now, for those at home that are, are not super aware, nade shot is the equivalent of shooting a grenade out of the player's hand before it uh, actually leaves. It is not something that you see a lot of, but it's so it's, it's a risk reward, is I guess what I would say to it. Oh wow, so he's shooting that out of his hand. That is, seems like almost more lucky than it would be anything else, but nicely done. And now he's going to grab this overshield and be in a position to take this ball and potentially take some more lead time, though. He's going to be immediately shot out, that that overshield being completely burned because of it. But Definitely as he life. did that, they saved his life. Now he has top position. Red is not in a great spot to put pressure on it. Of course, there's one player there pushing it now. He's going to rotate, unfortunately, right into a red player. And it looks like he's just going to continue running around. This is the time they need. This could be where uh, Vlad makes their uh, hard stance. We'll find out shortly. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of a mistake that I would have liked to see him turn around and try to slay out that red player with his teammate instead of jumping into the other one, which is hard for them to know, obviously. We have the player outlines, and they do not. Now, Bastion's actually, he's in a pretty unique spot. What did I miss? Kill. Kill. 
So Bastion wasn't a good spot there. Uh, not a spot you see a lot. Just down there at the bottom, perfect for drops. But also not enough cover to where only grenades or somebody trying to actually jump at you can get to you. Yeah, staying out of that range. And now with Bastion living on board here with Costa Clan, it's a good kill. Top mid, now he's going to rotate through to this red pack. Clean up those kills. Man, he's just putting on all this pressure with a good job there by the False Cowboys member. His nightmare just taking that ball right off the map, picking up some more time. 86 86, all tied up. Four minutes left in the game. Man, this is nice. I mean, this is what we came here for, man. This is the solid Halo. I still can't get over that point. little lip. <laughs> Oh. That should be a stat track for season two, I think, you guys. Oh, I say that again? So that should be a stat track for uh, season two. Oh, the, 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 yeah, the lift use of it? Yeah. Yeah. That should be. Down bottom mid, that was quite the fight there for the overshield. Last oh. season, I don't kill himself by accident now. That's uh, another one for the point board. <laughs> That's the look that Fallout's Cowboy is pulling away a little bit slowly. Uh, they actually were able to get the ball and get uh, positioned up for a little bit. Uh, it does seem like the tides have changed, so we're going to see a couple more points for our Amber Clad coming their way. Yeah, they're, they're flashing in pretty well. Costas Clan's just sort of hanging out here. Fireboys was going to have good shots on him as he not able to live through that, but they picked up some more time. You know, two minutes, 45 seconds left in the game. You know, I talked about this game type of map just being one that you really want to, like, hold down a location and try and set up camp. These players not able to do it, though, both being very equally matched. It's going to be very, very scrappy and probably come down to the wire here. I feel like this map never ends in a, uh, you know, a wipeout. Usually it's always by face on time. And honestly, that's why we like this map. On board here now with Costa's clan fighting somebody with Bastion. Back and forth with the Slays. I'm gonna move over Nightmare, who's gonna pick up the ball and try and run away and pick up some more little bits of time. Not a lot left. Oh, he was not able to. Oh, he was able to launch it into the abyss. This goes back to what I was saying, where like that that little bit of time is enough for them to respawn a position back up. Really good play. Excavate now on with him. He's chasing this player. Oh, he gets away from him though. He takes a position up top at Red Tree with his buddy. Of course, that overshield is in the hands of an amber clad. Now that's three down. If the ball carrier can just get to them, they'll be good. Alright, he is. On his tail is Nightmare. Flurry's able to take him out though. Pick up some more ball time. Minute. Left to go, just about. They just take the lead now, 115 seconds, and Flurry is electing this time to drop it off the map as good play as a couple members from Fallout's Cowboys are behind him. It looks like Nightmare picked up the ball and brought it right to the flat, sadly. Yeah, unfortunately, wrong position to bring it to there. If he just run the other way, it might have led to them getting a little bit more time. Each team just electing just for a little bit of momentum. Up only four points here is red team. That's in amber clad. Costa clan getting a good headshot there, but three oh, down for them is going to give oh. team some more time. They could come back here, and this is exactly what they didn't want here. We're getting Balls really close to that point where there's just no recovery. They got They got to push. They can't stop. And this is what's tough about this map is because once you get that in there, you're you're sort of almost yeah, guaranteed over. to get some more points. And just it. as you said, There's it is over. We have the ball. Woo. Literally nicely down to the wire. Nicely done. Down to the wire. Again, this one ending. I feel like almost in the same exact score the last time we saw it. On like uh, on Echelon or maybe even on this map itself. 141 to 118, but Man, that was might as well just be 120 to 118 because that's really basically what it came down to there. Taking a quick look at these stats.
solid damage, solid accuracy out of both players on the uh, both teams. Excuse me, on the slays, pretty equivalent too. Blue team still out slaying red by I think just a little bit, but not by a whole whole lot. That map definitely lending itself to the proper slays at the proper times, the rotations, when to pick up that ball and where to bring it to your team instead of the enemy. Crazy, crazy, you crazy time. You can see within the stats the uh, the good decision making of teams. Uh, the reason why I say it like that is because Nightmare, for as much oddball time as he had, he was able to keep up with the damage dealt. It might not be as much of his team, and that's to be expected in a map like this, but it's not super low. He doesn't have a huge amount of deaths. He was able to keep it and pull it smartly. He wasn't just wasting time for it. Yeah, that's a very, very good point. Being able to sort of both do the objective work and the work that supports the objective work is important, uh, especially when you've, uh, you know, you've got off a full multiple roles uh, as that uh, game evolved. Moving into like the next one. Re reiterate for the audience that this is double a limb. If uh, Flawless Cowboys takes the next one, the bracket does reset. They do not instantly get the win. That is correct, and they are currently looking very good to do just that. On board here with Ripsets, who has the high ground, flowing back towards the barrels that have been blown up. He's going to grab that scatter shot, stay alive, and put some good damage. Help it cost the the bottom. With the camo down, this might be a smart decision just to hold outside for a little bit. I. Usually electing with the snipers is the smart decision, but in the looks of it, uh, X-Fade is not going for the option. He's bringing it inside. Essentially, he's special delivered that to Amberclad. Yeah, I'm not sure I like it. I mean, I we've seen these guys all like to go into back bunker here. That's sort of the preferred place to hold it, but I agree with you. They didn't really have the numbers over there to support it, so I'd like to see him sort of rotate back to his team to potentially try and make better plays with it from outside than in. What a shot. Flurry going off with that sniper rifle. Yeah, and you can see now Flurry rotating like with his team a bit better. He just moved out of that back uh, back bunker area where those members were going to spawn on him. And he's just staying alive here, taking good angles. Oh. Fortunately, they are collapsing. Flawless Cowboys was able to get a good collapse on them and bring this one right back. Take the sniper in. The <laughs> Thanks, Faye, with that amazing no scope on opposing team. That's crazy. They are really fighting that corner. Each team seems to be spawning just steps away from that. All the power weapons back there. Yeah, beautiful double kill trade there from Ripsatch. That plasma grenade taking out the first player and then jab, jumping forward for the kills with that scatter shot. Camo is about to be up, I believe. Simply Fear is going to want to push, pull it down. He does just that. It leaves it for his buddy, Exivate. But Flurry's going to jump down right in front of him. Missed the camo player, but pressure on Back Simply Fear me. Yeah, was killed. Camel was killed there, correct. And now in Amber Clad, just sort of making a good run of it here. 13, excuse me, 20 to 13. He's on board with Bastion as he gets not quite the one the moves that he wanted to up in top tower. Some if you were watching Costa, Costa did jump off the map. It might seem like a bad play, but he did take the TAC mag with him. Uh, so keeping that out of his one's hand is sometimes a good decision. Um, it's just a bit. Is it an above it though? He's gonna get taken out though by Ripsets, and, and that was a good position that he was in there. But a good play by Ripsets, who's using that scatter shot well, taking him out of that power position. And now, of course, he's able to move forward into and take the bunker spot. Now. Yeah, they've got that corner. They knew the sniper was over there. They wanted, wanted it. That's essentially the place to be. 
Yep, we do good have body the shot there. Probably about 30 seconds too, so we gotta keep an eye out for that. Yeah, for sure. Costa Clan locking down this angle. He knows players might be coming over there through Whitehall. Properly re-evaluates. Of course, Fireboy's not going to be quite aware that he's going to be that good with a sniper at that close of a range. Costa Clan now rotating up through, trying to help his teammates. Got a couple of members over in Whitehall and Nest. And uh, yeah, it looks like Costa's setting up exactly as he said for this sniper rifle. But before he does that, he gets a good body shot and kill on that player down in bottom E1. Looks like the camo did get up. I can't tell who got it, if anybody. Oh no, it's just hanging down there. Nobody's picked up yet. It looks like it fell in kind of a weird spot that nobody was expecting. Yeah, it was very interesting. And I was on board with Kaza Clan briefly, who was trying to jump down to it, but then the platform sort of like shielded himself from jumping down there and from that player. Uh, doesn't look like anybody. No, it looks like somebody came away with it, right? Somebody did get it, um, but he. Uh, die with it. I think it was Bastion that got it and then got killed by Fire Boy. Yeah, burned right away. Mm -hmm. And no, really Amber Clad, though. Of it. Yeah, and Amber Clad up 39 to 28 now. Just, this lead has been kept pretty consistent at this point. Both teams trading back and forth. I'm sure Amber Clad is sitting over there. They, they don't want to play any more Halo. Like, they understand that. Like they, there's a, they, they might not be the team that plays me in this game. They might not want 14 matches of Halo. No, of course not. I'm sure nobody does, especially now. You know, the game's so late. It's the challenge of playing Halo in a tournament all in one day is that you definitely, you know, it's a game of endurance here for sure. Not only do you have to be just sort of, you know, good at the game and working well with your teammates, but you got to play consistently for a long period of time. That is huge. Can't really. That's not something you could just pick up the sticks and practice. Like the mental stamina, the, me the mental stamina. That just comes from years of playing. Yeah, it certainly does. And practicing in leagues and tournaments like this, excited to see all these players sort of continuously compete in Halo Five. Hopefully, for an infinite amount of time afterwards. A nice. <laughs> For sure. Love it. Love it. <laughs> oh, so on board with that. You know, you I can mean, you can dad jokes for me are just like amazing. I, I love them. <laughs> gotta gotta have a little bit of fun, right? All day. Flurry gonna fall off the map there. It's now Fireboy rotates the position he was just in, gonna get the perfect kill over on rip sets. They're bringing this one back just a little bit. Goes for the back smack, the that ninja, but not able to get What's that? Did he die with the camo? I, I couldn't tell. Oh, I'm not sure. He very well might have. They only need two more kills. We need two more kills. Costa Clan making a play over bottom basement. He's going to clean up that excavated player. Then another one's going to be back over. Oh, 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 what an unfortunate spawn location for Nightmare. Nicely done. Three to two now. Still in favor of Flawless Cowboys, but bringing it right back. They are in this still. They do not want to get this reset. 15 kills from Bastion, 14, 13 from Rip Sets and Costa Clan. Everybody playing a good game in that one. And then on the other side, you know, the stats just don't look that bad for um, for Falls Cowboys. I mean, yes, they obviously died a couple extra times and, you know, got them to the 50 kill mark, but all of them playing very equitable. So certainly uh, both teams capable of slaying this one just have to go in favor of your top seed tonight in Amberglad. Yep. Uh, chances are just based on like the amount of assist and damage that uh, Flawless Cowboy did is they probably just needed to breathe and bring that game back and they could have brought it back. They could have taken that win. Yeah, very, very much so. Our next one going to be Fathom Capture the Flag. We've seen it a couple of times now. now one of my favorite the track maps. Record where Flawless Cowboy has won all the objectives right now. So there's a good chance that they just take this and we get a bracket reset. I, uh, Amber Clad has won all the Slayers, while uh, our boys here have won all the objectives. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. 
you know i'm trying to think if this is going to be a different type of scenario in terms of whether or not objective play or, or slayer play or whether we can even categorize that for a game like this we are going to start off with flurry who goes bottom mid for that railgun railgun being a power up or excuse me that's power weapon on this map power up being camo He's gonna get a good kill time. He was trying to that uh, combat evolved right there. He saw the camo, but he didn't know where he went. So more like out there. <laughs> For sure, and it looks like camo went did go into the hands uh, of Excavate. As now I'll switch over to his POVs. He's gonna take top mid control. Top mid control being very important in this one. Getting the perfect kill. Oh, not the perfect kill. I thought that was gonna be a perfect there on for it, but nonetheless, it's the kill. Gonna get that double kill. This is gonna put them in a good position to grab that power weapon, potentially take some more map control as you see Excavate taking top mid. Top mid being very, very important. And then you can force the spawns either into their, you know, one of the corners of their bases. That's gonna what like allows your team to get somebody in there and sort of run a flag really quickly. You're dead on with that. Uh, they still have the top control, even with a couple pushes. Uh, looks like, oh, I spoke too soon. Why well, I believe I got the kill at Bash and just kind of fell a little too far than expected. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he used his thrust there and just the way it worked out, he wasn't able to get it. But I switched over here to Nightmare, who picked up this railgun, his team in a position to potentially prevent this flag cap and make one push of their own. He's now pushing right into the spawns, though, of Red Team, as they're going to be in a good position to sort of contest this. That was some smart plays by Costa. Kept running around the, uh, I forgot what's called, the tube. Uh, never stopping, never letting him get the shot. Oh my gosh, oh, the crappiness of those plays, all those players just jumping on that one after another, moving that flag up into the base. First cap of this game going in favor of Flawless Cowboys. Whew. I mean, that was just like a dog pile and a half right there over the course of many deaths. Invit about to pop up pretty soon. Simply Fear Me fighting top mid with Flurry who has that uh, overshield. He's going to trade, but it looks like a member of the blue team is going to be there to pick it up. Or, yes. Like you said, it, it's, it's a lot of scrappy combat in this. Um, we've got the ammo with the power weapon kind of pushing in. He's grabs, he's even grabbing the flag. It's just not a lot of plays that you'd see. Uh, team coordinated like this. There's three over there, and they let the camo grab the flag. Yeah, it's true. I mean, sometimes like it's 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 nice to be able to do that because you know you can just grab it and then toss it out and sort of like you know almost like make an interesting move where you're, you're the, the enemy team's a little confused uh, by you. But it could have just been the hugest in the right place to make that play, regardless of whether you have the power up or not. Gets, of course, the good triple kill there. Now cleaning up nightmare, just on a tear of right now. Oh, out shooting cost of no other. That, that that man needs to sign my posters. <laughs> yes, he does. And, the, you know, the, the aggressiveness of him pulling those fly caps, too. I mean, some professional teams might say, well, I don't really like that. You know, it's not exactly my style. But given just how aggressive he was playing and how well he was hitting his shots, I don't necessarily mind it. It really just kind of, like, throws off the enemy when you're just constantly hearing the fact that your flag can take him. I mean, I would argue, like, you know, they're winning right now. I can't, I can't say too much. Whereas the other teams. Oh, exactly. That's, uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not discounting it at all. On board with Rips as who gets the Hail Mary, though, on Nightmare. And just as that happens, though, he falls off the map. Lots of players dead for each team. Shame. With the fishes. Over to Simply Fear Me who dies as well. Nightmare picking up, though, that railgun bottom mid, and he's going to continuously control this power up and doing phenomenal this game. Now, Camo should be coming back shortly. I'm curious to see who's going to push for it, who's going to get it. Looks like x made with the attack bag, got it? Or he's trying to survive with it, he knows enemies are near him. That is three down, that, yep, smart, smart going for the push. Yeah, he knew that, right? He had that, 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 it was a huge kill there from the, yeah. The railgun player top mid and the excavate just immediately went into the base to put this pressure on this team.
because Nightmare just continuously takes the top mid position, controlling it. Activate's gonna grab to start that flag run with camo. Two members down from an amber clad. He's gonna turn around and finish slaying. I like the style, right? It's the same thing we were saying, you know, pull that flag and slay. Pull that flag and slay. Yep. That's what you gotta do on a map like this. The spawns are so quick. Uh, you, the enemy team can get to you quick, quicker than you expect sometimes. It looks like this is an account for a second point or a second capture. Ladies and gentlemen, we might be in for another round, seven rounds. We might be indeed. <laughs> Simply fear me running this flag. Really great movement from him as you see all the members of an ammo class desperately rushing that angle to try and prevent the third one from going in. They are on match point right now to force it to go back. A nightmare and his blue team squad are just slowly pushing it forwards there fortunately though that member from red flurry is going to be on that re and keep themselves alive for just a little bit longer well, hopefully this equates to a counter cap i like to see the amber side the fight and show your fangs guys yeah, this looks good here. I like the position that Flurry was in. Costa now running that flag bottom in. Flurry just sort of zoning this out. Just sort of weirdly in the middle of the map there, though. Still going to get the kill on Nightmare, and then that flag is going to go in. They're going to tie it up. They are not out of this yet. Camo should be popping soon. It looks like they went for a second pull, too. It's already out, the, out front. Uh, nobody pull, nobody back it up, though. We got Nightmare with the camo again. Still Nightmare, working. camo, and railgun. It seems like this weapon just never leaves his hands as he gets the good kill on Costas there. He's gonna try and make a little touch for this flag exactly as he's done before. Just inch it along just a little bit and then slay. Of course, there is a counter going in favor two of an amber clad, but man, Nightmare is just on. He's just unbelievable right now. Like. This is our this is our MVP boys. Victory. <laughs> Lawless Ladies Cowboys taking the first game seven, winning that one four to two. If you'll excuse me for a second, ladies and gentlemen, that's a bracket reset. <laughs> yes, it is. Man, those slays nightmare with twenty-three. The rest of his team in the teens out slaying in Amberclad very, very heavily in that one. They've got to feel very good about it. We are going to go to our next best of seven. If you are, were wanting to watch more Halo tonight, here you go. You've got it. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is the NAHL uh, Season 1 Grand Finals. We just got pushed to our second game of seven after those six games there. Flawless Cowboys taking it against in amber clad. Yeah, these guys, I mean, and, and we talk about the endurance test now. We're going to take a short little break for a moment, but man, you know. Don't that, go anywhere. Yeah, don't go anywhere. And like, I mean, be prepared to just see these guys like really, really hammered out at this point. You know, whichever one has the best endurance and is, is going to come away with it with this one because, yeah, they're, they're I'm even speechless here because these guys are playing so <laughs> phenomenal uh, right now.
Welcome back, everyone, to the North American Halo League Season 1 Grand Finals. We are moving on to our second best of seven in Amber Clad versus Flawless Cowboys. Flawless Cowboys took that last one, being the objective prowess team that they are in six games. Whew, it's been quite a day of Halo. We started at noon today. It is now almost midnight. Like 12 hours have gone on. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing good. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for you guys in production and you, David, for being here with me to watch these awesome Halo games. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's the best way to spend Saturday. Some good-ass Halo. It certainly is. Our first one going to be the Rig Strongholds. Second one, Regret Slayer. Third, Echelon Oddball. Coliseum Capture the Flag will be the first four. We will definitely see those. Fireboy, Excavate, Nightmare, and Simply Fear Me playing very, very well. Obviously taking that first one. Nightmare absolutely going off in that game. Simply Fear Me being consistent. They, Fireboy, they despite being it so late, is being consistent as well. Yes, they did pick the wrong map, they it appears. The wrong map. <laughs> Stronghold Plaza will not I don't be think we've one. seen Stronghold Plaza yet, have we? We have. We have. I don't know if it was, oh. was it this past one? It was the first game of oh, the last the first one. Game last. Okay. Yeah. So we do we do have a new map, a new rotation here for the best of seven, just to keep things fresh, and everybody. Yeah, don't worry, got, ladies and gentlemen, you guys are not you're not going blind. The brackets did reset because of that win. Uh, this is, tournament is double elimination since it's the finals. So we got we got a minimum of four more games, but don't worry, this is some crazy Halo. No. This has been some good restart? ones. I don't. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the game lead, so we cannot restart. Yeah, so we need to uh, send some messages to these players <laughs> to get them Play to that. stop playing, <laughs> playing their heart out hearts out here. <laughs> well, let's uh, take a moment here and message them. hilarious that's too too funny but yeah if you're just joining us here welcome 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 this is the end of our season one year we had eight weeks long with really 16 teams there was eight teams we had a couple divisions and now we've made it all the way through a double elimination to our last best of seven here between these two teams and these two teams were not the um the the number one seeds you know just going to show you that the, the level of competition and the intensity that all these guys are bringing to the table the growth that they've had throughout the course of the season the past eight weeks has been pretty and significant a, a hunger for the win too oh yeah yeah so it's really it's really phenomenal to see and like you know as you said you know any day you get to watch halo it's always great a good time i do love me some halo Yeah, I'll leave the game too. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Just trying. To, these teams are so into it. It's so late at night that they're all in the heat of the moment, playing the wrong map and game type. So we gave <laughs> the lead over to them for some reason. I don't know, but you know, it happens. Um, but while we've got you here, while we try and get this sorted out, um, you know, thank you again always to all the competitors, uh, to all the players, to all the viewers. And if you're interested in getting involved, like certainly uh, do so. You know, come in here if you're interested in getting involved and being a player for our next season. Um, we're going to be, you know, working through all the issues that we had this one and trying to create some cool new things. Potentially keep the stuff that you love for a new season there. Um, well, I think and uh, then... I think you hit you hit it on the on the knot on the dot. I don't know. Why I said it like that. Um, <laughs> if this if you do love Halo, this is the one of the best ways to actually show support to it. Uh, just honestly, just start jo join the Discord and just start from there. Uh, even if you're not good at Halo, like, you know, I'll be the first to admit I'm not that great at it. But you can get the opportunity to cast. You get the opportunity to play with some of these guys, get better at it. 
uh, we have separate divisions to actually allow for those that don't feel like they're at a pro level, maybe more amateur entry level. And like those, that's, that's a good start. Like that's how you can get to it. And those yeah. players that are looking to step into infinite when it comes out, Halo five is gonna be the closest thing to it. Why not get paid to do it? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure there's some of you who know more than others. I myself am just sort of getting into this. Um, I mean, I don't want to call it an industry, but it is an industry: gaming industry, competitive esports. Um, e you know, just being a part of this, especially with just the Halo franchise. Like, there's a whole lot of communities doing cool, cool stuff. Obviously, there's three, four, three that are make a big part of making all of this happen too, um, from a high level point of view. And I think you know, the more we band together in our small knit community of those still playing Halo Five, those are still diehard fans about it. You know, the more weight will go into be able to make this kind of stuff a full-time opportunity you know bring home some cash or whether it's still just a hobby for you you know develop some friendships and really work uh, on games because you love them so much i mean this is why we all play it right we love to get better to improve with these things to form for friendships and uh you know slay me some slay me some spartans <laughs> slay me some spartans i want to i want to share that now slay me some spartans <laughs> Yo, Mark, yeah. I know you're out there. That's what our emote should be. Slay me some Spartans. <laughs> Make that the slogan, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, and we have seen some slang tonight. I mean, you know, the other oh, the other advantage of watching some of these awesome, awesome players at this level is that they are just capable of so much. You know, there's rare that you're seeing um, you know, any action that isn't valuable action. All right. Looks like we are getting back into it. Rig Stronghold's going to be the first one. These guys just had a little warm up for Rig, or excuse me, Plaza Strongholds. But Rig Strongholds will be the first one. Um, you know, in this one, the, the stronghold locations being in Nest, being in Basement, and being in BR Base. Um, I think you tend to want to take, I've seen teams really treat this as a very heavily rotation one oriented one so like not necessarily electing for any particular setups uh, i'm curious to see how these guys play it because you know especially for those who aren't as strong on the slaying side of things you know how do they elect to really serve their team the best in terms of you know putting their bodies in the right location putting the damage down and taking strongholds <laughs> Guys, ignore ignore the little pop up on the screen. It is strongholds. It is not Team Slayer or Capture the Flag for that matter. Uh, looks like we're looks like Fury or Fury. Wow, words. Uh, is gonna be the one with the camo. Uh, yeah, I need to get away with it too. Three members down. Four flawless cowboys. Flurry now putting pressure over on this nest when he's going to get the good shots on Excavate though. Excavate doing a good job of getting him luck. one shot and simply yeah, fear me is able to finish him off. This map is always like one of the tough ones on Stronghold because you never know which one to defend as a unison. You know like which uh, hold one, hold two, ignore the third one. Like that, that kind of mindset. Uh, Cause you could do you could do nest and basement, but at the same time, like basement can get shots on BR base, and BR base can get shots on nest from angles. Agreed, agreed. I think that's one of the reasons why, as I said earlier, like I've seen a lot of teams just sort of elect for more of a rotation style than a setup style because there's not really a super advantageous one to take. I mean, I could be wrong. These guys might want to really do a good job of taking one versus another. Right now, we're seeing Rip sets with a nice double. He's going to go and try to defend this nest. It certainly doesn't mean you're going to give up on these, but man, what a play by Fireboy. He's going to get that kill, though, not without getting the reset first. And if you got the scatter shot out of it, I would say. Uh, that's a good trade in his favor. That's a power weapon out of the enemy's control. Yeah, I mean, it certainly is. And, and yeah, I mean, yeah, he wasn't able to finish that nest, but their team was able to do so just now. Of course, as we move on with Excavate, he's going to try and put pressure on that nest as Red Team's there to try and retake it. Of course, that's just one player going for it. And now that protection protected him from Excavate, but not. It's simply 
This is a team game. You can't expect just a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, you're gonna almost die. You're getting called out. You gotta prep yourself. <laughs> exactly. Never want to stay in one place for too long. Costa Clan gonna run into that grenade. Flurry also dying there. So we move on board. Fireboy picks up the camo. His team down a little bit. They're gonna spawn their players outside. He's gonna leave that uh, nest position there for his team to take. But it looks like though they're not quite finishing it off quickly. Now Fireboy just walking very slowly. Gonna defend this basement. Gonna do a good job there. And he's gonna play this camo very cautiously as he knows that there are a couple players. Gonna unfortunately they'll get back smacked by Costa Plan. What? Good play small. by Red Team. He really needed more help in that scenario for them to like not be able to sort of hunt him out like that or, or sniff him out like that. It just seems like such a slower game for these guys than what we've seen prior. Yeah, it could definitely be three members going down, four falls cowboys, two down, four in amber clad, still red team kind of Still racking up those points. Of course, BR base could be taken very quickly as three members from Falls Cowboys head over there. Now they do have a couple more. On board with Flurry, who's just rocking down in these, um, you know, sewers. He's going to get underneath Blue Team. Hopefully, he's trying to live down here as he gets some slays, but he's tr trying to. Yeah, no. I mean, interesting position from him there. It's kind of unfortunate, but he did distract them for a, quite a bit of time that allowed his team to really get uh, another stronghold there. Yeah, but it looks like they're just training for one for one. Uh, they took they took inside, they took the BR base while they took basement. Or not basement, the the outside one, I don't know what it's called now. Uh, nest. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so that's what we're seeing is like sort of the, the rotation in the trade. Like when you recognize you really don't have the position, you're gonna move on there. There's a nice stick by Excavate, he's gonna get that kill on Costa Clan. Now trying to take basement here. He is by himself. He's just watching this angle at stairs, but that's not where they're going to come from. He's going to cut caught out of position as a couple red team players are there to defend basement. Camo should be up here shortly if it's not. Oh, Nightmare has it already. Looks like he's trying to sneak inside. I don't know what he's playing for. He looks like he might be going for basement. Might be just stopping Dave. Plenty of options. Plenty of options indeed as he's just right in the middle of the map there. Playing his life while he is been spotted out. Almost one shot though. He's gonna be able to, I think, get away from here. As his team is still up. They do have two strongholds. He's gonna run through probably the D on Ness as that player is taken out. And this is a good example of actually showing that they're not rotating. They are just holding these two our basement and Ness. And especially with the oh, use of that fight. power weapon. Cast the really kick butt captured. there. Yeah, he certainly did. Not exactly the engagement you're looking for, but hey, it's hard to predict that if somebody's going to five you after you get the first shot on them sometimes. But hey, that's what you get at these top tier plays. Flurry now playing, got quite able to hit his shots, though, does get the trade. Yeah, you ain't playing eights, guys. We're playing a tournament here. It does look like Ripset had a scatter shot through the middle. Um, yeah, and Ripset got kind a of nice kill. He didn't though. kill that guy. We did get one really, really sneaky shot, you know, scatter shot, and then bullets just sort of like split in the angle there. Of course, him dying in that position uh, gave the opportunity for Flawless Cowboys to go ahead and take Nest, forcing Red to spawn over back in their BR base. Yep. It looks like they're just holding outside. It's the, kind of the safe bet. They just have to watch out for the. Uh... Well, they got the they got the power weapon outside, so they just gotta watch out for camo. Now. Yeah, agreed. It's probably coming up relatively soon. Oh, I stand corrected. Costa got the, uh... You know what? I don't even know what this is called. Railgun. He got the railgun. <laughs> what a shot. Fireboy dying, burning that camo there. Three members down from all his cowboys. And this game is pretty much going in favor of whoever has the slays at the time. They're rotating properly and doing the work. And so it looks like that, uh, you know, that, that the slays are important here. Of course, a couple members from Red Team able to take that basement, excavate sort of by himself, trying to live here. He's going to get pinched. 
by Flurry, but not before putting in good shots. And is he going to be getting away? What a play by Excavate now rejoining his teammates, possibly taking different angles for a fight. I like what he did there. Surprised he was able to live. Oh, maybe not long enough. Oh no, he's still alive. He's just hanging out. He's got a teammate now. Uh, they're going to pinch into the, the nest. Yeah, that whole time that we saw him, though, he wasn't getting a whole lot of support from his team. Um, and so I just wonder, you know, yeah, what their coordination is going to be, their downfall here in this one is they're still losing by quite a large margin here. The game only goes to 188, 248. At this point, in Amber Clad can uh, really play scrappy if they end up needing to, though. Ripset's on board here with that scatter shot. Going to get that kill, get that double. Get that triple. That's, that's three down. There might not be a way for them to recover at this point. They really need to be yes. on the point right now for it. Yep, and, and you know, this forcing them to spawn inside that bunker area. There's only a couple avenues they can go across the clan. So they're putting good damage, uh, preventing those players from doing that and uh, getting over at Nest Air, and that will be game number one in the second best of series, 100 to 48. Very no, this, is a, this is a really good way for Amber Clad to start. Like you recall from last uh, set, they didn't win any of the objectives. So coming in hot on the first objective definitely shows that they're getting hungry for it. They didn't take losing very kindly. They don't like a bracket reset. They wanted to win and walk away. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And, and uh, big difference maker here is damage. I mean, just look at the damage output from Red Team. Um, look at the, the kill difference from Red Team. That's as I said earlier, like this seems to be that this the strongholds were going in favor of the slays. Teams were rotating properly to take the two versus one. There's not a whole lot of total controls on both sides, and uh, because red team came away with more of the slays, they took that game. Now to add in what you're saying too, I uh, give a small shout out to Costa, sitting with 3,500 uh, damage dealt, but also really close to that six sixty percent accuracy. Like we saw him out, out, out shoot. I don't remember who it was that had the camo. Uh, it's it's showing he's got he's ready for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Accuracy being one of those stats that like people, I don't know, people have mixed feelings about. I personally hold uh, it at high value, but I, honestly, like I, I say that only because like I don't know if it necessarily matters. Like I, you know, it doesn't. It really the the damage that you output, the kills, the slays, the work you work with your the the way you go with your team really matters. Of course, I think accuracy is just one of those things. If you ever are noticing something that says, "Man, I feel like I'm playing really well, but like things just aren't going my way," and your accuracy is sub fifty, that's probably like, "Well, you maybe are in the right places, but you're just not hitting shots at the right times." So, uh, I would agree. Yeah, that can be unfortunate. And it goes the other, like it goes in complete reverse too. We we're sitting there with um, like over thirty five hundred as an example with a high high accuracy, which sixty is not exactly higher. It's it's a good amount from which damage you're doing. It shows that you are consistent in your shots. You're consistent in your fights. You weren't losing one v ones. You were winning one v twos. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Starting off here with nightmare on blue team. Jay saying blue team looking a little lost. I agree from that one. Hopefully in this game they can kind of step it up here. Slayer uh, is, I believe, what they they won the other the two other Slayers right that we've seen so far uh, today between these two teams and Nightmare with this grenade launcher, sort of one of the small changes that the NAHL makes. It was Amber Clad that was the Slayers last set. Oh, excuse me, it was. Oh, okay. That's how the blue team won all, all of the objectives. They lost all Slayers. Oh. So maybe with uh, in Amber Cloud taking that first objective, this will be Blue Team's opportunity to switch the switch the the mode there and, and take a slayer. Rip set, but that sexy stick, man, that was so good. All I saw was like a shoulder, and he got that that plasma on him. We're still on here with Fireboy, who's really just trying to get up top mid. Something I've noticed from from him where he. He kind of takes himself out of the play sometimes. Like right there, he was not in a whole lot of plays. Um, of course, his team is ally. still playing really, really well. Now on with Excavate. <laughs> Oh, 
it's got a good pinch there. Uh, simply Fear Me and uh, Fireboy were split. I don't know why they both pushed in like that. They could have kept kept separate and hoped for uh, middle center spawns. Now well, they're up 16 to 6, so they're definitely doing something right. Camo's gonna be, or excuse me, Invit Overshield. Wow. Is going <laughs> to be up in uh, just a moment here. Nightmare is going to fly for it. Going to get it just in the nick of time to be able to use it and it be burned, but not before getting a really nice double kill. Going to put some more momentum in their team. Oh, Spade oh can we give a shout out to Nightmare's pistol? A little cat skin, I love that one. <laughs> nice little pieces of art in this game are always nice fodder for sure. Oh, that is team down on Amberclad's side. Yeah, I mean, we saw an Amber Glad play Slayer really well, but 23 to 10 is quite a performance here. Um, I think the difference we're making is, is the assists this time. You know, eight assists from Simply Fear Me and Excavate at this point. Like, they're just playing phenomenal. And, and this map lends itself to be incredibly aggressive. You see now Fireboy pushing hard with his team. They have this time in position. They know exactly where all those red players are. And so they're able to fly in, put in grenades, put in shots. And you just see it's just like shooting fish in a barrel here. Yep, and then you just turn around, rinse and repeat, do it on the other side. Yeah, fortunately, red team now able to take a little bit of that top mid control. Fireboy now going to put pressure on it, but what some nice shots from him there. His team is going to be able to collapse in on that last player, and they're just going to continue to string this along. And unless red team can really like do the same thing that Blue was doing, even if they continue to like trade like this, 34 to 14, up 20 kills in this game of 50, it's going to be a pretty difficult comeback play. This might be a stick dinner, man. Cool. For those, those of you that might not be aware of the Bungie era of Halo, uh, Stick Dinner just refers to when you beat a team by more than what? Is it 25 points? Right? I always thought it was 30. Because, uh, it might but, be you know, 30, it, I don't it, remember. It changes with how much Steak Dinner costs. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's that's where it pretty much originates from. It's just, did, did, I, did you set me up with my own joke? I like that. <laughs> Uh, oh man. OS is back up, but ladies and Simply gentlemen, fear me with the triple. Yeah, this is not even a steak dinner. This is going to turn out to be just like a mediocre entree. <laughs> As he turns though. around and is going to team shot. I mean, the team shot from these guys is phenomenal. This time, red team looking a little bit lost. You know, definitely being susceptible to the speed at which Paul Cowboy's playing. This is one of those matches you just, you just don't want. If you're in that position, this can break spirits. Like Amber Clad so... is gonna feel devastated after this match. Yeah, I mean, hopefully not. I mean, you know, but but I would agree. I mean, that's a tough loss, 50 to 20 yeah. for sure. It's certainly well, gonna hurt them a little bit. But you know, that's what that map is like too. So I would say, you know, it's now all tied up. You know, you won your first objective one. Uh, you were you were losing them before, and now you've given that. And this one, you're giving up this Slayer, but that Slayer is a tough one. You know. Uh, that particular map is rough. between two players. That yeah. is, he, that is impressive. Yeah, pretty significant. And then you add the other two up. That's what thirteen. So that's um, I can you know I feel like I don't think I've ever seen this before. But uh, X Fade has more assists than he does kills. Like I don't see uh, that a lot. Yeah. I don't know about you. Oh, I see it all the time. That's me. <laughs> That's that's me. I I have very little kills. I usually have a lot of assists. I tend to try and be low on my deaths, and uh, you know it depends on who I'm playing with, how much damage, or it depends on who I'm playing against, how much damage I have. So, but uh, moving on, nice performance there. They've got to feel good coming off that one. Echelon Oddball gonna be our third map here. Series tied up one to one. So we're definitely going to at least that Truth Slayer game the very end oh, this goes um, back to what we were saying with uh fisher where this is one of those maps where not a lot of people could practice uh just because it came late in in the era of halo 5 uh so this is one of those ones that can make and break yeah for sure i mean it's definitely one i have like a little experience on but that's because i kind of stopped playing competitively you know when this came out but these guys i imagine they played on it quite a bit and it's proven itself to be a very balanced map um, I think a lot of people end up liking it. I know when new maps come on and you don't play them that much, everyone's like, well, I'm not sure I like it. It's just not good. But given, you know, the 
the amount of time, excuse me, that the uh, 343 and the community has had to sort of like really understand what is a fair and balanced map and what is worth keeping in there and what isn't. Um, this one has definitely made its stake, especially as an oddball uh, game type where you really have a lot of opportunity to sort of like dip and dive, put that ball off the map, you know, take it in some interesting areas with some height, with some cover to, to push up some of all time. Invis is gonna be here. Flurry taking a really good position, throwing a couple of nades down there. Is he able to kill that camo player? Camo did, camo did die, yes. Yeah, it looks like they were able to grab the rocket launcher as well, along with the ball. So they are in the power position right now. Yeah, and this is like such a strong, strong start from in Amberclad after losing that 50-20 game. And it just goes to show you the professionalism that these guys play. They're just brushing that off. They don't care. It might be past midnight, but they're here to play and they're here to stay. This goes back to like a conversation we were having prior where it's a lot of times you get to take it match to match. You can't like focus on that series. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's what makes you a good professional, you know, when you do that. Now, Fireboy for four Flawless Cowboys, able to take this and rotate it far away from Red Team. And I really like his, his ability to, like, recognize that, sneak it away, pick up some ball time. We're going to probably see some more scrappy uh, a scrappy style out of these guys as we saw the last time they played some, uh, some oddball. It has proven successful uh, back to back. I'll see why they should change it. If it works, go break it. And a good finish there from Simply Fear Me, though Bastion's going to catch him with a grenade as he then grabs the ball, goes bottom pizza, he's got teammates there to help him, three members from Balls Cowboys are down, he's going to rotate over to open deck, he's going to be able to pick up a good chunk of ball time here. The hands have changed to it, it looks like Bastion's running around with it, uh, they've been able to position themselves up on that upper deck. Doesn't look like the Cowboys are able to break it just yet, but we shouldn't count them out. Yeah, I just switched over to Nightmare. Definitely getting a good angle there, but I think I don't prefer that he prefer to sort of rotate around we a different angle to sort of uh, take that player instead he, you know, meets his face with the ball and dies right there. And that four <laughs> members go down momentarily as the ball still stays over here in this uh, sort of top open deck area. On board with Flurry now zoning out players coming from that rocket spawn, putting shots over across from Lift over at the, uh, you know, the passive pistol spawn. And now his teammate dies, he picks up the ball and they it's continue rough. to pick up time. The grip set is running around with them. He's trying to, oh. he almost got the camo. Nightmare picked up camo, but it was nice. It's interesting to see the fact that like thinks the power weapon and the, the power up that had to break their formation and thinks of that uh, Cowboys were able to break through their defenses and actually grab the ball and get a little bit of time on theirs. Yeah, yep. And that's kind of the decision that like you know okay do you do you, do you try and rotate around with your ball to get this power up? Are you able to do that? Or excuse me, power weapon or, or what have you? Are you able to do that? And uh, sometimes it works out for you. You can. Sometimes it doesn't, and you put yourself in a poor position. Well, I would agree. It looks like uh, Amber Clad is actually coming out pretty well on this. They've got the ball. They've got the corner. They're striking it out. Yeah, and holding this up and cooling. I, I like this spot to hold it. I've seen a lot of players do that. This time Bastion looking to throw it off the map. Is, he's pushed pretty heavily there from blue team. And this time now, Nightmare being able to grab that ball. Not with numbers, though. He grabs it. His team now, of course, has control of blue room. And they're going to elect to basically try and do the same thing. I'm gonna switch my POV over to Ripsets, who's trying to rotate in behind them. A couple of players, of course, dying down low, but he doesn't realize that the angle that he has here. Of course, Fireboy now spots him right out. That ball player's gonna drop, and now Ripsets, the only member left alive on his team, he's gonna just try and stay hidden and wait for his team to come. Oh, looks like he's fighting. Uh, I think he's gonna try to bait it out because he knows the camel's gonna skip soon. Same with Rockets. Yeah, agreed. I mean, yeah, I said stay hidden, and of course he reveals himself instantly. I don't know if I love that call, to be honest, because he definitely wasn't in a great position to get any kills there or really make any momentum. Though he is able to live, comes in, gets a good double kill, makes the ball carrier one shot. That ball now is going to go into the hands of an Amber Clad. Well, that was a good reset for uh, Sebastian's side. Yeah, wonderful rotation from... 
from Fireboy there to rotate through back to cooling, recognizing that uh, I didn't really have a setup going, so he was able to, to get that kill and prevent any more ball time. 100 points now for in amber clad to the 82 of Flawless Cowboys. This one seems to be this will go to 150 as opposed to before we've seen it basically go to time. Well, don't count it out just yet. It has been a very long time since we've seen a reset, so you could, you could be on it. I mean, just the way they're playing, that's sort of my, you know, my prediction, of course. So Excavate dying with the with the camo, that was a huge mistake by him. Well, say a mistake, I kind of think he, his play was fine there. Just the plays from that other player were phenomenal, being able to spot him out there and get that perfect kill. We are seeing a tie-up. Uh, this is not fun in Amber's class favor. There was a point where they were up about 50 points, and now they're losing it by a couple more. And as I say that, the ball, ball handle switch. Yeah, this time they really love this cooling uh, room. And it seems to be working relatively well for both teams. I mean, yes, at that point, you know, they did have a big lead that they threw away. But Costa Clan coming up big with a double kill there. Triple kill now. Overkill in route. Is he going to be able to thin this one off? No, but it doesn't quite matter. Don't love that he peaked that angle when he was one shot, though. But hey, at any point, they're still up. 140 and counting to a 150 game. This one could very well go in favor of an Amberclad unless they stop it now, which they do. Nightmare picking it up now. I can drop the ball, slay out. They cannot afford to play anything less than the perfect game. Now, with them losing that side, Rockets are up. But the ball right next to the ball right next to it. I switch here. Yeah, Ripset selecting to get uh, a little bit of ball time there. Uh, I think I would have rather seen him kill. Now, of course, on board with Fireboy as his team gets a couple kills. He's just trying to stay alive, put in good damage, his own ball out. They cannot let the enemy team to grab that ball, and they're doing a good job right now of, uh, of doing just that. Looks like he's opting for the reset. Uh, oh, we're gonna find out if Amber gonna get that the big uh, push and keep it. They only need a couple more seconds. Looks like five to be exact. Or six now. Ball incoming. Yeah, and Flurry just playing like a snowstorm. Putting in lots of damage here. Plasma pistol. Good shots. It's probably gonna look to go grab a ball. Nope, he bleeds it for his teammate. And this one is most likely gonna clean it out right now. Good gun punch there too from Flurry to clean that one up. Fifty. 150 to are, 128. Are we sure we got the right teams? Because last season, we, or last session, we had the teams winning objectives, losing objectives now, and the team winning slayers are losing players now. I'm a little you know? confused. We've, what happened? <laughs> you know, we're really seeing these players in a new light now as we move into this second best of seven. Tensions are high. You know, adrenaline is pumping. The nighttime has set, or the morning, if you're Fireboy. <laughs> and, uh, strong. yeah, exactly. So we're seeing, you know, and, and I'll say, you know, we're probably not seeing all these players at their best, right? Because, you know, obviously the, the time and the energy, it takes a toll when you're playing a full day of Halo. But nonetheless, they're still playing excellent, excellent Halo. Uh, the midnight sweats. I'm being told from Biggie B. Yeah, it's definitely real. That. I've got it myself. 16 kills apiece from Bastion, Flurry, and Rip Sets. Costa coming in with 14. We're going to go into a Coliseum catch the flag next. Oh, man. Snow, are we going to have all seven matches? We're not going to see any of huh? We shall see. We <laughs> shall see. You know, if, uh, if, if they somehow figure out how to you know, uh, engineer humans so that we don't need sleep. That would be ideal, <laughs> I think. Uh, but that's a, probably a different discussion with a different group of people because man, I mean, this is, I would, you know, despite how you know tired this, this all these like guys are like just study halo players. Like we're not going to, we're going to sleep tonight. I'm willing to bet <laughs> these guys are going to turn it straight into an eights lobby. Watch <laughs> maybe, maybe not Fireboy, but everybody else will jump in it. Watch. <laughs> Uh, you know, I mean, it's funny because, you know, I, I, 
I consider myself a gamer, but I uh, probably not in comparison to many. And uh, I've never been a great nighttime gamer. So the fact that we're seeing these guys play at such a high level now, even after they're exhausted um, playing a full day of Halo, like props to them, props to these competitors for putting on such an amazing, amazing show. Yo, I see in chat, there's a JUSMC, $50 on red winning this cap. Bro, you should just put that towards the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> 50k Monopoly money, he clarified, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the best money in the world. On board here now with Simply Fear Me. He's gonna get a good rocket kill on Flurry. What are we playing here? We're playing Capture the Flag on Coliseum. We've got Sniper, we've got Rockets. No power ups to speak of. Interesting asymmetrical, or eh, I guess it's not really asymmetrical, but it is on one access map. As now simply fear me as just running train as his team is going to probably get this first cap in the board. Oh man, they already took it home. Yeah, they certainly did. And simply fear me pulls a second flag there on with Fireboy putting on good pressure up in the sniper area. Going to switch our point of view over to Bastion who's going to make a counter pull here. These guys are playing insanely fast off the start of this map. It was definitely the first time to pull it. All four were dead on Cowboy Pro with it. Is that yes, back to back perfect from the entire team? That's impressive. These guys are definitely ready to go. Here. They want that money. They want that bed. They're so done with this. Man, they're playing their freaking hearts out. Flurry, Did mating over. <laughs> Is it Costa? Yeah. We will see uh, power weapon spawning soon, so there might be. It's it's always nice that they spawn usually on the same rotation. Uh, at least uh, sniper and rockets on the first first launch. So it's always interesting to see which side teams push. If they push both, if they try to you know get creative, it's real risk. <laughs> Oh yeah, they're actually not on the same rotation. I believe Sniper is three minutes and Rockets is two. Oh, is it? Yeah, they should be. They should be on separate ones. Um, but you know, you'll notice, and we actually haven't mentioned it tonight, but uh, you know, there's no there's no timers to sort of let your team know. So you've got to actually keep track of the time, the same as you would a power up. Just one extra little thing. You know, I don't know if they have coaches in there sort of keeping track for it. I think it lists late at night. Probably not, but um, that's certainly something that you would want to do in a, in a game like this, where you know you want somebody keeping track of those times for you because yeah, it's not on your HUD, and so it's you know if you miss that timing, that could be a huge push or a huge swing that could change everything that two seconds of you, you guessing when that team when your team asked you is like hey what time was rockets that changes everything exactly you gotta know those are you're in position to take those flurry with a good grenade there on board with bastion just putting pressure on these spawning players i'd like this spot from him it's definitely not the high ground but he's certainly able to get the good trade with nightmare who's been going off switching over to costa clan he's going to be spotted out immediately though by simply fearing so that sniper's going to go down he won't able to put that to use it looks like fear me won't be able to either rip set uh, finish them off he did drop rockets uh, that might be the game changer that they don't want on their side yeah, very true, and Flurry picking up a good double there. Fireboy, of course, able to clean him out with a double of his own. Looks like now he's sniping it. Uh, most of the Cowboy is pushing on their base. He's going for an interesting rotation mid to just defend out and stop the flag from being pushed. Props to him for being uh, game smart, actually, on that. That's Most people probably would have pushed back to the base to, you know, panic, freak out defense. No, I mean that's that that's definitely the right play there for sure as you saw both of those players looking to come straight out the front He's able to pick them off and stay alive at this point And so now he's actually taking an aggressive position with the sniper hanging out over here at DMR though There's gonna be a couple of blue players not gonna give him an easy no scope there um, And he's just gonna sort of fight to stay alive gets the body shot Does he have any members of the team to help him out? It looks like Ripset's yes is gonna be able to do that now take his place over here with the DMR 
in his red fountain. He's, it's like he's got some help, obviously, from Bash and being very aggressive as well. Both teams just sort of flying at one another back and forth because they're tied up one more in this series. Excuse me, in this game. Uh, the series is two Amber and one Flawless, just to clarify with my boy here. Yes, it is. And this is our second best of seven. Flawless Cowboys won the last four. Now they're looking to really make their name and their claim for this grand final. Uh, if, history, if history is supposed to repeat itself, we're going to see uh, Amber Clad take this. It's another objective, but I mean, until you see the game over screen, you can't count anyone out. Not at all. Couple members down from Flawless Cowboys. That means they're going to start to make this run here. Flurry sort of hanging out over on the blue elbow. Typically not the area you want to go. Trench can be very vulnerable, susceptible to grenades. But hey, when the spawns and the position and the slays work out for you that way, you just take what you can get. Yeah. From the looks of it, most of the uh, blue team was, uh, I don't know what it's called, but like the blue cave area. So going going through like the underpass probably seemed scary to him, but it was a smart rear. Oh, definitely, definitely. I always want to rotate towards your teammates away from the enemy team when you're running that flag. You are quite vulnerable with not the best weapon, and definitely uh, not your flag. Down. What a return there from in Amberclad. Three members down from Falls Cowboys. They grab that re. And now Bastion in a good position to put his three members sort of flying from Falls Cowboys over into uh, Red Fountain. And Bastion is getting really good shots on all these guys. And that's it. Amberclad takes it. All right, so they give Jay 500K in Monopoly money. <laughs> Red team going off on that one, especially as you'll see in just a moment. Bastion, 19 kills. Costa, 17 kills. Slaying out in this one. I mean, we saw them, right, not be super strong, uh, you know, in the objective play, but they're using their slaying prowess now to sort of secure these victories. 3 1 going in favor of them. They are, here. they are definitely working as a team. Uh, that's a total of 38 assists right there, right on the board. Just for Amber Clad. That's, that's just a mighty impressive number, guys. Yeah, really is. Perfect kills. A lot of medals going out on each person's side there. You know, goal land stands, stealth captures, headshots, double kills, triple kills, everything under the sun. These guys are playing fast. They're playing well, playing together. They're taking Seems these like ones. <laughs> They're probably playing exhausted, honestly. But hey, sometimes, you know, you turn that adrenaline hey, on with that, you, know, you hit that right spot that you can just focus in and play very well. Halo. Truth Slayer going to jump right into it. These guys are wasting no time for them to get tired. <laughs> <laughs> so in Amber Clad, up three to one now. This might be the, the moment we get to go home. Snow, are you ready? This is a tough one, considering I am already at home. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I hear you. I hear you. Truth Slayer, if there's ever to be uh, a decider here of who can play better Halo, I think this is a great one. Such a raw map, very open. I'm going to start off here with Simply Fear Me. The Gonna go put pressure on this camo. Takes a position that I usually take. This is somebody doing the same that I do, where he's sort of staying a little bit back, trying to be guarded. Both Costa Clan is gonna take him out there. Uh, Fireboy seemed to have burned camo. Uh, he picked it up, and two grenades later, he's sitting down. Yes, he is. Just a Slayer match, this one, you know, uh, rotating, pushing properly. Team shots, uh, getting five beats on. Definitely the case. Seeing Nightmare and Simply Fear Me work well together. Nightmare now, unfortunately, not able to get away. We move back on to Simply Fear Me, who's just putting on a 2v1 type of show here. No, Staying alive, now getting his shields back. Whew. 
If I were to be, uh, Fear Me and Nightmare were the ones that hit, it was about 25 uh, assists in the last Slayer game that we had. So, I mean, those those are the ones that you want to watch out for. You don't, you do not want to be tied to them together. No, definitely not. Super good at working well together with their team and even working well alone, getting the perfect kill there on Flurry, caught out of position over there in toilet. Now simply Fear Me pushing over into this top bubble. He's going to get caught out with not great high ground from Rip's head. So. It feels like he kind of just got cocky after seeing the, uh, the Slayer, or the, 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 the wall. Five kills in a row. Yeah, potentially. He might have been trying to block that spawn, not quite able to do it in time as well. Um, yeah. But even so, still hitting those shots super, super well. Like, it's just it's insane to see the speed at which these guys are playing at. Up 17 to 10, though, is blue team. They're down 3 to 1 in this series. Right now, Excavate actually leading the charge with six kills on their team. I'm gonna switch over to his point of view. You know, Floss Cow was about to be sitting there. Guys, we got the reset. There's no reason why you can't take this. We can't let them just walk away with it. This, this is our game. This is our money. This is our championship. What are we doing? <laughs> and after they've worked so hard to do that, it looks like they feel exactly that way. Up 21 to 13, the camo going in the hands of Simply Fear Me. Now jumping over and they get the pinch on rib sets. A couple members go down for red team, and Simply Fear Me is going to continue to hunt. Amber Tribe just needs to slow it down a little bit and turn it into their game. Uh, they're doing a lot of, from what it looks like, they're doing a lot of like 1v1 fights and then waiting for a teammate to clean up uh, any, any clear call out of the path. Yeah, agreed. I mean, we're seeing cost of time just sort of like, he's not quite alone, but it, uh, they came and his teammate didn't have a great position to, to, to you know, shoot at the same people at the same time. And, and that's sort of the challenge, I think, that I find with Truth, too, is that, like, you never run a B, obviously, in the same lane, uh, holding the same angles as your teammates. But sometimes the way the spawns dictate and just sort of the vulnerability that you have to move through a different one, you don't really have a choice. Uh, and that's what right. can be so difficult. It looks like we are falling away again. Uh, this is a 12-point lead, ladies and gentlemen. Help, 11 points. But like, I, like I've always said, we don't count them out, so we see that, that game over the streets, and think it happen. Beautiful shots there from Simply Fear Me. Not sure if he actually had help from his team, but of course they all do have now top mid position. Two members down for an amber clad. Now Simply Fear Me rotating in behind. Going to get the finish on Flurry. Yeah, the assists are definitely working well in their favor for this one. Um, and at this point, yeah, they can trade out as they need to. 37 to 20 to take this one. I'm sure they feel very confident right now. I sure hope so. They're they're definitely getting away further and further. I mean, from 12 to 20. Uh, <laughs> if they play it smart, it might not be another steak dinner. <laughs> might be, and you just like, especially on a map like Truth, as I just said before, like holding those same angles is like you you know not necessarily what you're always looking for. But if you are gonna do that, being aggressive with the way you fly into engagements and sort of like taking your enemy by surprise, you know, if you're rushing with all three your members into two of theirs, the likelihood of you getting more of the uh, you know the, the better end of that trade is certainly um, high. Yeah. Can't really, can't count it. Well, there, there they go. All four of them are down. Maybe, maybe Cassius Curse is happening here. Yeah, they're definitely controlling it very, very well. I'm on board with Bastion now. He's trying to make something happen here. Rotate through with his team, but when he's they're consistently a couple down, it's going to make it really hard for them to not die at this point on the small map. I think I'm ready to be convinced that this one is called pretty soon here and we will be going to a game number what is it? Five? Five. 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 Six. Six. That would be game five. five. Oh this is game five. Right. Yeah we're great at math, trust us. It's cool. Alright, we, we only read. got confused because our production guy was selling us five. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Look at this though. Amazing place here. We've said I was already to count them down and out, you know, and they did a great job bringing this one back. 29 kills, getting six without dying once. So they're playing this incredibly, incredibly well here. Uh, of course, just now, as I say that, getting a little too cocky, not able to keep up that intensity and that pressure. A little too, little too late there. Going to lose it. 35 to 50. Once again, just look at those assists. It's it's the, the the solid teamwork of both of these teams when they win is just uncontested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the momentum going strong in their favor there. But I mean, look at the consistency out of red team too in Amberclad. Like nine kills a piece, so eight there. Excuse me, out of Bastion. But you know, in that map and game type, like it's so susceptible to just to be overrun. It's hard to come back and forth with with the assisting and the speed in which uh falls cowboys was playing there simply fearly leading the charge with 16 kills um and then 13 11 and 10 respectively with the 15 assists from excavate to your <laughs> point yeah just phenomenal even though you know the damage equally spread more or less between all of them so that brings us to game number six i gotta ask uh biggie why why did you spell it like that <laughs> we're all we're all we're all getting getting to that point. Uh, it looks like two members of Amber Clad have changed colors, but they might be taking a quick break. Oh, it's one from each team. Oh, okay, I see it. Looks like uh, one of the teams has, or one of the players from the team has disconnected, so we're just gonna give them a second to reconnect. You know, I gotta, I gotta say, so it's getting, it's getting pretty crazy. The, the series has completely flipped. Like since, since we started last season or last session, we saw, we had, uh, flawless cowboy getting all of the objectives and none of the slayers, but now they've lost all the objectives and they won all the slayers. There's, what do you think meant the mental check? has happened for them to make such a dramatic switch you know i don't know i mean you know part of me thinks wow that is that just a coincidence um and i'm gonna say yes it is just a coincidence because uh, i think that like the the reality behind these objective plays is that recognizing from the slaying team anyway they're recognizing in the objective plays like that's what they need to do like both teams probably compensating a little bit extra in that other direction to try and make that uh, to just try and make that happen and of course you know being objective versus slayer you have a slightly different way of thinking about the games and these are also different ones than we saw before so it could also just be that you know that they're stronger at this than the other one you know that these particular slayer games um uh, flawless cowboys just are good they know truth slayer really well as they showed there they know uh, slayer regret and because you know the combo uh, of the map and game type and certainly be the case you know you might fundamentally be very good at capture the flag but you have, might have a couple maps that you have trouble with same with slayer same with oddball same with all of it um so yeah that that's that's my explanation of it without knowing these players uh too too much and you know my knowledge of the game from my experience of it but um yeah, it's, it is quite funny and, and quite a coincidence, I think, to just see it completely flip from objective being in favor of Lawless Cowboys to now them being the Slayers and vice versa. Well, I think I think you hit it, like, you probably hit it directly on the nail because I think we can all agree that most of us are pretty good at Stronghold, but the moment we see Empire, nobody's good at that. <laughs> nobody's good at Stronghold Empire. Why is that a thing? Right, yeah, there are ones that play very different than others for sure. I mean, I think, you know, in this one, seeing both truth and regret go in favor of Fallus Cowboys, like, that doesn't quite surprise me because those two maps, I think, play relatively similarly. You know, there's obviously some differences, but they're, they are, you know, uh, variations of themselves right there and both yep. lend themselves to a very aggressive play style. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree. And we're seeing it with that, too. Yeah. All right, so... This Fisher oddball game that we're about to jump into in just a moment here. All um, right, hang on, hang on, Snow. That's that's here's the question, right? 
Oh, okay. Yeah. How many people do you think are going to miss that jump again? Use the oh, wait when you say use the jump, what jump are you talking? Are you talking about taking the lift? Or are you talking about that little jump that I'm still excited that I know no is there? <laughs> that's on the side <laughs> of top mid. No, the the one that we've seen people miss and fall to death on. We must have seen it like six times today. Oh, uh, which wait, I'm sorry, I don't even know which is is that the jump from TAC Mag uh up to yep. the treehouse? Yep. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've seen these guys miss it time and time again. It's only getting later in the day. I I think we're gonna see it happen quite a bit now as well. <laughs> uh, Unless of course, you know, they've they've been no, playing it now. They, they have to feel it. Give me a bit. number, Snow. Come on, give me a number. All right, I'm gonna say we're gonna okay. we're gonna see it we're gonna see it missed uh twice. Twice. Twice, I okay. Think. I like it. I can I can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off here with Fireboy and his buddy moving into small door. They're going to hit by nades, though, instantly going to get killed by Ripset. Ripset's putting good shots into Simply Fear Me as we go on board with him. This cam, uh, this overshield, though, into the hands of Costa Clan, going up from bottom mid to top mid, going over now to big door. He's going to put good shots in Fireboy. He's going to melt his overshield, but he's going to still get that kill and put some good damage on his players. Oh, one of the interesting things about Costa with the, the overshield there is I'm pretty sure it was Night Boy or Nightman that actually had a solid opportunity to punch in the back, but missed. He could have ended that 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 spree and that, that could have changed things. You just never know. Yeah, yeah, very, very, uh, very true. I mean, sometimes missing those ones. We've seen it a couple times too, or you know, whether it's missing a shot or missing a, a beat down or whatever it might hit, it can certainly turn the tides into your favor, especially if you can live out of it as well. Yep. Now, it does look like we got uh, Amber Clyde with the ball. The ball. The soul just kind of hanging out up there in the blue deck. <laughs> I don't know exactly what it's called. Uh, this yep, might blue be tree. the opportunity for them to, to truly get points on the board uh, before anything else. Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of the way I, at least the way I've played oddball on this map tends to um, play out where, you know, you can just kind of camp, uh, sort of set up in one area of the map and really get a lot of big ball time. And it's hard uh, for an enemy to break that. You can see uh, Excavate now pushing this this angle. We all know over at Small Door uh, up to the tree house there. He's putting good shots, but he's got to wait for his team to sort of distract them so that he can make that jump and get up there um, and really then put on good damage. But it looks like Costa Clan's not giving them any room to relieve. And just as I say that, I believe a player has left at 55 to 7. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, somebody on Flaw's Cowboy side has disconnected. Um, looks like we'll be returning to the lobby. Uh, chances are it'll probably just be a rematch, restart of the match. Um, actually, our rules dictate no, that we will not restart the... Well, we will restart the game, but the match will be um, resumed from the current score that it's at. So oh, uh, red team makes... has 55 and blue has 7. Um, yeah. So in for, this for those case. that are like our production officer, that's 95 for red and 143 for blue. Nice. I'm kidding. I love you, Biggie. Nice math. <laughs> I did write that down. So we are good. 143 for blue. If I could spell blue, there we go. And red <laughs> needs 95. Um, well, yeah. wait, do we, hold on, what's the, is there a clarification, like, do we pull it back a little bit, because, I don't, I, okay, I think before we restart, ladies and gentlemen, we should probably clarify and find out at what point he disconnected, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page for it. This is very true, I think from, I mean, yeah, from my, what I saw, I think it was pretty close to 55 to 7, uh, it might be a little bit less than that. But uh, yep. looks like we're going to get clarification on that. And, you know, we wrote some some new lag out rules. We're hopefully for the next season going to have even more rules to deal with scenarios just like this. Um, I'm actually surprised we haven't had any real lag out issues uh, during our cast so far, except for right now. So I'm you know, going to give ourselves a little pat on the back that's not deserved at all because, uh, you know, we, we, we don't control that. But it's always nice when, you know, Halo works well for once, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope everyone is staying hydrated, all the players and all you viewers at home. It is hot as hot can get. No. Right now. 
I'm pretty sure he means we hope you guys are drunk. It is almost midnight. It is a Saturday night. <laughs> this is true as well. If you uh, are so inclined to continue <laughs> to do that, it only makes Halo more fun yeah. until the next morning. <laughs> you gotta hang out with guys like us. You got heavy, heavy rainfall up here. You got Mr. Snow. And you got to give it out to Mr. Biggie B. He's dead silent in the in the stream, but he has to hear everything we say. And I, sometimes I think that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very true. I always I always think you know as a as a new caster myself and somebody who is particularly I'm I'm actually a pretty shy person in general. Um, it's uh, you know interesting taking on this kind of responsibility and growing, getting better at it, and having to having to talk more and you know, talk about what I'm seeing and, and learning in that way. And I just hope that somebody enjoys it, you know, so. <laughs> well, if nobody else will enjoy it, at least I'm enjoying it. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, so I appreciate that, man. Yeah, it's been a pleasure casting with you tonight as well. It's been some awesome games, too, to watch. Like, nothing sort of makes my heart sing more than getting to see players play some Halo. Same. And that even doubles up to uh, the uh, you. Uh, we can't do observer just yet. To those out there watching, um, we said this prior. We'll say this again. Like, if this is something that's entertaining to you or something interesting to you, uh, don't be afraid to speak out. Uh, join the Discord. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, find a team, create a team. Just just be part of it. It doesn't matter how good you are. We're here for you. There yeah, are definitely. plenty of options for it. Um, we speak pretty highly of on the Spartan five program. Those guys are really phenomenal when it comes to coaching and bringing players that aren't even probably on an amateur level up to par to where they can compete. And then like we were saying prior to there's two divisions. If you're not at the top tier, you don't have to play them because you'll be in one of the lesser divisions. You'll play people a little closer to your level, make new friends, get to hang out with people like us, you know, <laughs> Halo guys can Halo. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty great to see, you know, and I, I know the communities have been strong, but like as a, again, a new person to myself in these communities, you know, since, since COVID started, if I'm being honest, you know, I kind of said, Hey, let me dive back into my love for video games, especially my love for Halo. And I've been really welcomed with open arms. You know, I have a lot of great things to say about people from the NHL, you know, all the guys doing other casting stuff. There's many other tournaments, you know, greater Toronto, um, NGE, uh, even when, uh, the, uh, the blue team tournaments. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's one more that we're missing. I'm trying to. Oh, there's to many more that we're definitely yeah. missing. These are just a few. You know, CGLs oh, put on some good stuff? events. Esports yeah. arena stuff. I mean, there's so many people doing really, really cool stuff. Then, oh uh, wait, HCS. Good boys. <laughs> of course. But all right, we're back into this oddball game here. It's Let's a remember now. The OS. Enemy has the ball. Yes, he did. I was going to say, let's just remember here, 143, blue team needs 143, and 95 red team. Now they were off to quite the big start, Costa Clan with the overshield, rocking that little lip that I just never knew was there because I'm not a great Halo player. Now going up to top mid, getting good shots, putting all the damage on these players, going to get taken out, but not before uh, allowing his team and McFlurry to push into this base and not quite kill them. Man, blue team going to good job staying alive here throughout all this pressure and even getting a couple kills that was massive there from uh nightmare and his buddy that was almost a second or a couple seconds of the whole amber oh, clad being down Enemy has the ball. yeah i mean we were watching uh you know amber clad's push there and just like not quite able to finish all those kills and, and therefore it was just going right into the favor uh, of the Falls cowboys as they're still now holding this top blue tree position Shout out to uh, Simply Fear Me using that attack mag. Extended mag's unappreciated, apparently. <laughs> well, it certainly doesn't hurt to pick up that weapon, right? If you ever, if you ever run out of ammo, uh, you can yep. switch right over to that one as well. Now three members, of course, now going down four flawless cowboys. Cost the clan right there to pick up that ball, but I don't like that play. You know, it's, that top mid area is so vulnerable. I hope you guys didn't miss it, but Nightmare did just get extermination, I think. Uh, I just saw that he got four kills. Um, I don't know if it's a confirmed extermination or if it was just an overkill. But uh, it was four, four on my feet. Man, I definitely missed that one. 
on the with costly position to try and guard this ball. He's gonna watch not to pick it up and put out some slay. He's gonna kill on Nightmare there, setting up for the overshield. I like this play. He's got some support from his teammate. They're zoning this one. Simply Fumi is gonna get a good grenade kill on them. Um, oh, it's down. Uh, looks like they're just trying to nade it out. I think I think they were trying to go for a reset, but they they failed the drop. Uh, Floss Cowboy is taking away, taking the ball, the ball way away from uh, Everclad. They definitely want their their points back. They don't, they don't feel happy about losing as many as they did that first session. Yeah, of course not. Game relatively even here. Fifty. They need to get to a score of one forty three here, up twenty. But he's still, of course, down because the red team only needs to get to ninety five. Now you're getting pretty close to it. I hope. I'm curious if they do hit their 95. Are they gonna quit? Do they like? Did they know that number? You know what I mean. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I'm yeah. sure that, that we figured it out. I think production's on it. Um, but on with Costa Clan just got a nice perfect kill. He's now flipping over. He's gonna grab this ball, try and get a little bit more time here. Is now him and his teammate have this red position. They have good zoning here. He's gonna stay in the back, let his team sort of put the pressure. Uh, on blue team is they're just going to protect him at this treehouse. There was a moment where all four were down on Paulus Cowboy, so that was the perfect moment for Amber Clad to set up. And that is, in fact, what they did. Oh, yeah, and what a big reversal there from Costa Clan. Fireboy, though, thankfully going to kill him out, but that not before that ball is able to move. Good plays from Paulus Cowboys, uh, just beating the plays of and Amber Clad just barely. You know, each of these teams playing with yeah. hearts out right now. He missed. Oh, oh! What a smart decision. He helped that. It's slowly pulling away. Ladies and gentlemen, they only need about 30 more points. There's your one. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh! oh. Oh, there we go. Costa Clan just fell off the map right there, though. Does that count? That was like right in the same spot. <laughs> it was like pretty it close, right? <laughs> we'll count it. We'll count it. We'll take them. We, we take those here. <laughs> they are some. They are pulling away. Uh, it looks like the ball did just get reset. Uh, I do believe Walls Cowboy is just running with that ball they don't even want to give the other team the opportunity to breathe with it no, they understand certainly. that they're only was that 22 points away from losing yeah correct it's pretty close to losing right now sorry about to miss those shots in that player down there so now we go on board with rip sets but one good shots pinching his players so they're gonna play that ball which is very very smart now Ripset's gonna be not in the grass position two players down for each team momentarily Bastion's gonna run up and grab this ball he's gonna bring it back to his team they just need to milk this last little bit of time 95 is the number they need to get they're okay, they're so close hopefully they'll get carried away but they're playing a little weird about it it doesn't feel like correctly it feels like they're just getting hungry you know, I believe That's that is it. It's it. Ladies and gentlemen. This... What a game. What a game. game over. Nicely done. Just at that last little moment there. Uh, you know, playing an interesting position. You know, not one you'd see them make, but he just needed a little bit more time and getting a good ball kill there. And, you know, that map is certainly capable of doing it. Nicely, nicely done in amber clad taking the victory there taking the grand finals just uh just to point out to it again that's that was another objective type that they won after losing all of them last round yeah like let's, let's up. give it up ladies and gentlemen let's i i don't know what we have in chat but let's get some emotes up for our new champions in amber clad this season's or the North American Halo League Season 1 champions. Phenomenal. Phenomenal performance out of all these guys, especially our top players there. Bastion in that one, rocking it with 62% accuracy. A lot of oddball time. 
Costa Clan with 17 kills, leading the squad there. I mean, these guys played phenomenal. As you mentioned, you know, it's really switching it up. Objective Slayer, you know, their prowess there. Just, just absolutely excellent, excellent Halo. They are our grand finalists. They're coming away with the money for this one too. The well, the the big portion of the money. Our second place team does get some cash as well. Give them the due credit that they're deserved. Phenomenal, phenomenal. You know, congratulations. Any any last words you'd like to say, uh, David, before we we all leave? Uh oh, we have the what? Oh, okay. Snow, go do your thing. <laughs> so, I'm told here that uh, just last little bit about the SVP program. It's a nonprofit community group dedicated to helping players.